Hey, Zach Crawford here, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to earn affiliate commissions on complete autopilot. So one of the things I'm constantly talking about on this channel is creating a sales funnel to basically create passive income with affiliate marketing. And honestly, that is how I've been able to create my seven figure business. And what I'm doing is I'm continuing this series I've been doing lately on affiliate marketing. And basically what I'm doing is giving you the actual training from one of my paid products. And all I ask for in return is just to hit the subscribe button, make sure you go below and smash that notification bell as well. And then finally, what I want you to do is comment below and let me know what you got from this training. Let me know the insights you got from this training. Now, with that being said, my suggestion is to take out a pad of paper and a pen because what I'm giving you seriously will change your life if you actually apply it. This is stuff that I teach my paid members. It's things that have made me millions of dollars online. And it's something that if you actually apply it, you know, yes, it does take a little bit of work. Yes, it is something that requires a little bit of effort to put together. But what happens after you do that is you can actually create passive income with your affiliate marketing products. You know, this is if you want freedom, if you want time freedom, financial freedom, you want to be able to actually keep growing your business. This is the difference between what amateur affiliates do and what professional affiliate marketers do. And what I can tell you is once you learn this process, it's very duplicatable across many different products. I have several different affiliate marketing products that generate complete passive income once I set up the actual sales funnel. So what this is going to do, it's going to walk you through my process of like how you reverse engineer your competitors, you know, exactly what you write, exactly how you create it and the way you put it together. And so there should be no questions if you actually go through and watch this, like how do I create a sales funnel for affiliate marketing? It's it's going to give you everything you need to know. You're going to know exactly how to do it, how to put it together. And of course, if you have any questions, throw them below. I'll be happy to answer. All right, guys, I have a recording going, so I'm just going to let you know what um, we got planned as well as what to expect. So I'm going to let you know this one's going to be a very detailed one tonight. I'm actually, I've designed this to be honest like a course that I can sell possibly later. So I'm definitely um, going to be putting this inside of Top Earner Mentor. Um, however, I'm probably going to end up selling this a as a standalone product because this is something that's a skill set um, you absolutely want to learn. Like if, if your goal is to be able to make a consistent $500, $1,000 plus per day, like this is a skill that you want to learn. And honestly, you could do this with free traffic. Now, I'm going to be teaching you guys paid traffic. As you guys know, I'm heading down to Costa Rica in about a week. Um, so paid traffic is going to be a huge focus for me this year. Um, but this, this skill set right here, before I really even knew to the degree of what I'm doing now, this is what got me to making multiple thousands of dollars every single day from 100% free traffic from just blogging. So understand that when you actually focus on this, you, you, you really decide to master this skill, it can change your life. So here's my suggestion, whether you're watching this replay, uh, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it inside of Top Earner Mentor, my suggestion is if at any point in time you feel like I'm, I'm, this is overwhelming, this is, this is frustrating, this is like too much to learn, I want you to realize like if, if you want to change your life, if you want to be able to make the type of income you want, this is the skill. This is the one thing that you should focus on mastering because I promise you it will change your life. Now, what I want you to understand is that anytime you create a sales funnel, and, and there's multiple different types of sales funnels, and I want you to realize I create several different types of sales funnels. I do you know live webinars. I do webinar replays. But this is one of my favorite sales funnels I'm teaching you, and it's because I know it works. It's worked for several of my coaching students. You know, this is the exact sales funnel, basically, that that Steve Howe went through and, and got nine sales of nine ninety seven his first time. Now he's making twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a month. So I'm one hundred percent confident to tell you that, that this this funnel is what you want to learn. And once again, even Steve, he's doing one hundred percent free traffic. So what we're talking about is creating an irresistible freebie. And I want to really define really quick what I consider an irresistible irresistible freebie. It's basically in your marketplace, there's like usually one, two, three, four, five things that they really want to learn. It's something that like everybody in that marketplace wants to learn and they, they literally would crawl over broken glass to figure out how to do it. Now I'm going to talk to you about different ways to figure this out, different ways to do the research, different ways to piece it all together. But this is something that like you absolutely have to have if you want to make money. So what our real goal with this masterclass is to basically help you map out a simple sales funnel. So when I say simple, understand I mean it's simple to put together. It will take you some effort to put together. You know, it may take you one week. It may take you two weeks. If you're brand new, this could take you three to four weeks. But let me under, let me re-emphasize that once you create this, like it's done. It's an asset that keeps sending you money month after month after month. And then all you have to do is keep tweaking it to make it better. When I mean tweak, it's like little baby tweaks. So it takes a little bit of effort up front, but it's one of those things that once you have it in place, you consistently make money.
So I want to also go over basically what you're going to need. So there's going to be two things you really need to do in order to create your freebie, right? It's the product you want to sell with your sales funnel. So for some of you, that is going to be your own product. There's some people in here that are coaches and consultants. There's some people in here that are network marketers. There's some people in here that, you know, are affiliate marketers in all different niches. It doesn't really matter. Like the things that I teach you inside of my training it works for both. It works for affiliate marketing, meaning promoting other people's products, and it works for selling your own stuff. So no matter what, you just need to know what product you want to sell. And the second thing is two to five pieces of content related to your product. So some of you guys may already have a blog. Some of you may already have like a YouTube channel. You've been creating really cool videos. Um, maybe you have a podcast. It doesn't really matter. You're going to see that you can you can use all different types of content. There's no perfect way to create a funnel. So if you already have some assets, it's going to be even easier for you because you can use some of that stuff or maybe tweak it to make it part of your funnel. But if not, you can just create it from scratch. You know, like right now, I'm actually creating um, a funnel from scratch on to promote Bluehost hosting, right? And and it's going to take me time. I actually think it's probably going to take me about three to four weeks to do that because it's like it's not one of those things that I need to do right now. Like I'm working on some of my other funnels that are more important, but I'm I'm working on it in my spare time because it's something I know that once I put it in place, it'll probably make me a, a spare twenty thousand dollars a month after I start driving traffic to it. So this is how powerful this is, guys. Like I don't care if you're promoting something that. It makes you 50 bucks a sale, $100 a sale, $1,000 a sale. You know, when you start getting into, say, $1,000 plus per sale, then you probably actually really need to, you know, get into, you know, a webinar funnel or, or a phone funnel where you sell from the phone. However, what I can tell you, I've, I've sold $5,000 coaching programs with this funnel. <clears throat> now, so with that being said, if you have a strong relationship with your audience, which when you build these funnels, it really does two things. It builds goodwill and builds trust and it sells stuff. So if you if you build a basic funnel, you can work up to the point where you can even sell $1000 products from your funnel. But I'm going to take this that most of you are probably just getting started and I would say that this is probably good to sell things up to say 497. So anything below 497, um, you can use this funnel very effectively. Um, when as I said, you start actually selling higher ticket stuff like example Steve Howe, he sells coaching, right? So he uses this funnel and he guides it to the phone for a phone con a conversation. So it's going to depend. And if you guys are, have specific things you're selling, you guys can chat and, uh, you know, throw your comments in the chat box and I'll answer your questions, you know, uh, periodically throughout the presentation as well as at the end. Um, but this, this funnel can sell pretty much everything. Now there's a few suggestions and these are, you don't even need to ask me for like affiliate links. Like these are just things I believe in. And these are things that I think are going to really help you to, to get really good at sales funnels. Like honestly, my, my copywriting abilities have got probably 10 times, if not 50 times better after reading the book, expert secrets. Like don't even worry about going through my affiliate link. If you don't own it, go buy it. If you, if you already have it and you don't realize like expert secrets is, is a copywriting book. It, the difference is he made it really sexy and fun to read. So it's not like most copywriting books. I'll be quite honest. I've never got through a full copywriting course and I've never read a full book on copywriting. I probably made it like 20 pages in and it put me to sleep. It's just like, it's the most boring subject ever. It's something that I've known that I need to get good at. Um, but it's really, that I've learned by doing, I, I didn't learn by reading and studying. So this is a book, honestly, that if you go through and, and you read this, like I th like now I'm on like the third read. That's how good it is. It, it's going to increase your copywriting skills. It's going to teach you to tell stories. It's going to teach you to be very engaging with your audience. It's going to teach you to relate to them on a very deep level. So this is, in my opinion, it's like a must. It's, it's going to cost you 10 bucks. It's like free plus shipping. Just go get it. Um, another thing, if you're serious about this skill set, you know, one of the people that I've learned the most in, in my career about probably funnels is Andre Chaperone. He has a course called Autoresponder Madness. I think like now he's on like version 3.0 or so. But anything from Andre, in my opinion, like my highest regards, like he's one of my favorite email marketers. I honestly don't think there's a better email marketer than him personally. Now he does things a little bit different than most people. I don't really do his whole method. Like most of his stuff, um, I don't do. But how he does his basic email funnels, I follow. The systemized process he uses, I follow. It's very easy to understand. Um, a lot of it, what I'm teaching you, is based off of, of stuff I've learned from him. Um, but he does some more advanced stuff that I don't do. But nonetheless, like I think his course, if you're serious about learning email marketing, it, it's it's a very good purchase. Now. 
My third tip for you is that whatever you're selling, just go out there and find somebody that's selling the same product or something very similar. Like if, if you're just starting out building sales funnels, like instead of trying to follow like five, 10 different people and like, oh, this person says that, this person says that, like just find somebody who's selling the product that you want to sell effectively and model what they do. Like it's, it's a game proof plan for the most part. I mean, don't copy when I say model, I mean model, like use, you know, things that they do and and try to figure out how you can do it in your own unique way, but don't like copy word for word, what they write or word for word, what they say, try to try to make your own spin on it, but follow what they do very closely. This is going to help you like just win right out of the gate compared to, you know, spending a long time trying to figure out how to piece it all together. Now, with that being said, I want to I want to go over really quick, you know, what is a sales funnel and really why do you need one? So some people, and I'm going to guess most of you guys know what a sales funnel is in this group or you understand it because I talk about sales funnels a lot. But just in case, a sales funnel is really just a series of content. And this can be anything from emails, videos, blog posts. Um, and it's it's really just in a sequence that strategically introduces and sells your product on complete autopilot. That's That's what it's for. You know, like when you build this the right way, it will consistently send you money day in and day out. If you're consistently building your traffic pipeline, whether it's free traffic or paid traffic, once you build this, it will consistently sell your product every single day. So this is what my simple funnel really looks like. I don't I do not do things super complicated. What's funny is a lot of the people teaching the really advanced, complicated sales funnels, I honestly think the whole reason to do that, and this is something I learned from Dagan Smith about I don't know, roughly, uh, I think it was like two years ago. Like two years ago, the year I hit, it was like over $500,000 in a year. And at the end of the year, I was still what I consider an opportunity seeker. I was looking for the secret, like how do I get to a million dollars? And it was funny because the webinar he was holding is about the whole, his whole concept is the industry is designed to make you feel stupid. And I, I literally asked the question that basically he used as an example. And he goes, man, like I asked him, like, how do I get to a million? I made 500,000. Like, what do I need to be doing to get to a million? And he's like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, he goes, you've already figured it out. Like you've already, it's just doing more of what you already do. Right. He goes, that's it. You don't need anything else. You already figured it out. You can get to 10 million. And that was like my real eye opening moment is that you don't got to complicate stuff. You know, for me this year, my focus is making my business as simplified as possible. I'm selling two to three different things. That's it. That's my only focus. I'm not doing anything else. So realize your funnels do not need to be super, super complicated and understand I'm going to break down every step of this. I'm going to break down like, you know, the type of emails that you have for each value step. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to break down the emails you would have in the pitch, um, emails you'd have in the hard pitch. I'm going to give you examples. So there's going to be nothing on the left. I literally spent like six hours building this out today. So a sales funnel is basically going to help you make consistent sales every single day of the week. So this is what I want you to realize is this is the real secret to creating consistent income is a sales funnel, hands down. Like every single person that, you know, that is making money that's in any big niche, they're using this process. Like they create a sales funnel. Just understand this is a must for your business. Now, this is my results. And th- this is this is a small result, honestly. Like the sales funnels I create, like each one of them, usually send me a passive 500 to $1,000 per day every single month on complete autopilot. And that, that means not doing any additional work. All I'm doing is filtering people into them from my traffic sources. So this year, what I'm doing for every single program, whether it be my product or it's affiliate products I'm promoting, I'm building the funnel once. So maybe it takes me two to three weeks to build this. But then once I build it, then all my focus is, is driving traffic into that funnel. Give me a yes if this makes sense to you. This is the number one thing you should focus on doing first this year before you do anything else. You build your sales funnel, then you secondly, you execute on generating traffic and leads. Does this make sense? Give me a yes. I just want to make sure you guys are following. Make sure we're not like surfing Instagram on our cell phone where we're watching at the same time. Another thing I, I want to say, guys, regardless if you're watching the replay or you're watching this live, I, I probably should have said this already. I'm going. You're going to have the replay, and, and you're probably going to want to watch this a couple times, but get out a notepad and paper. Take notes, and, and take notes and then ask questions at the end. So anything that doesn't seem clear to you that I'm going through, you guys know how I am. I'll hang out here for two hours tonight if I have to answering questions. So whatever you don't, doesn't make sense, take notes. Things that make sense that you want to implement, take notes. I'm telling you, this is that important. This is one of the most important lessons I can teach you. All right, I'm seeing yeses. That means we can move on. So 
I want you to keep in mind that I usually have to keep tweaking my funnel several times after I launch it. You know, this is one of the biggest things I see people like make the mistake. They think like, I'm going to create a funnel and I'm done. And it doesn't work that way. But once you dial it in, once you tweak it, there, there literally is no additional work. You just keep focusing on getting new people into the funnel. Just like I mentioned a minute ago, you know, it can take a lot of work up front, but it's, it's one of those things that you work now and you get paid later, like forever. As long as you're generating traffic, once you build a funnel, like there's literally funnels that, that I built, funnels that I've seen competitors build. They've been driving traffic into those same funnels for like three years collecting money. money. They, they literally built it once, didn't change it. So it will take a little bit of work up front. You build it once, and I'm going to teach you later like how you look at the funnel, how you figure out like how many people you drive through the funnel, how you tweak it to make it work. But once you get it dialed in, there really is no more maintenance. Like it's it's the easiest business model I know how to make money online. Once you build this, it's just an asset. Like there's nothing like it. Now, I want to go over really common sales funnel mistakes I see. This is stuff that a lot of people do. This is things that most people make the mistake of when they build a funnel. And so I want to point these things out to you. Now, something I want you to realize, and probably if you have if you have your pad of paper and a pen, note down like a little star, just common sales funnel mistakes. And I'll tell you why later when we get into the presentation as to why I told you that. So there's a few mistakes I see consistently over and over again, and, and these are the ones that you really want to avoid in order to make sure that you create a profitable funnel. So number one is not selling enough. You know, you guys hear me talking about value all the time, but I want, I want to really make a point really quick. I believe in hardcore direct, res, direct response marketing, and basically direct response marketing is all about getting your product in the hands of your customer. That's it. I mean, at the end of the day, we can we can talk about value and we can talk about, you know, being this nice person, but you don't make money if you don't sell the product and you also cannot help your customer if you don't sell the product. So I want you to understand what if you're promoting something that you believe in, I personally believe it's your moral obligation to sell it to them. So what I do is I focus on value on the outside. That's like your content pieces. That's like, you know, for instance, my free Facebook group where I do the live streams Monday through Friday. That's YouTube where I do the videos. It's my blog. It's, it's you know, anywhere that you're creating content, Instagram. There's plenty of value. But once somebody comes into your funnel, your goal is to sell. So this is what I see a lot of people doing, especially bloggers, like they actually try to promote their products. Bloggers understand the concept of getting value out to the marketplace. They probably understand it better than anybody, probably better than most marketers. The problem is they're really scared to sell. Like what they would do is have value, 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 and at the end, like, hey, by the way, this product can help you. The problem with this is in, in most email funnels, and I'm going to show you my funnels stay at like a 50 to 70% open rate across the board. But for most people, by the time that somebody gets to their pitch email, it, it's it. It's done. Like, I mean, for the most part, most people are not opening that email because you haven't, you haven't hooked them. And so a lot of people don't see that last email. You'll see when I show you later, like my open rates stay consistent across the board, but you want to be introducing and pitching your product before then, because if not, you're going to get like a trickle of sales at best. Now, number two, and I also want to real want you to realize that these are, none of these rules are hard pressed. You know, like the first one I would really like go against this second one, I've been testing different funnels and I'm going to be testing different things, but I, I've literally made funnels where I, I do like offer something for sale right out of the first, right out of the gate. Like some of my recent funnels I just built um, on ClickFunnels and Mobe, I'm introducing the product for sale for the first day, but the difference is I'm doing like a 30 minute value video before I introduce it. So there's plenty of value up front. It's almost like doing a webinar. I have time to indoctrinate them, get them to like me before I introduce it. And it's not a hard sell. It's like, hey, this is a product here that will help you do that. And if you're interested in it, check it out. It's a very light pitch. We're going to explain how you do pitches later. But one of the big mistakes I see people doing is if, if they're not scared to pitch, they get too excited and they want to sell their product. And just like they're pitching immediately and they don't know how to do it properly. So you can pitch early, but you really need to understand what you're doing in order to establish that relationship first because there's there's things you have to, to build first, which is rapport and trust. And you have to get somebody sold on the idea of a product before you can sell them that. So I want you to understand, I'm going to say that again. You cannot sell a product that you're trying to sell. Let's say you're trying to sell ClickFunnels. You cannot sell them on ClickFunnels until you first sell them on the idea of sales funnels. So write that down. You can't sell somebody something until you sell them the idea of the product that you're trying to sell first. 
So if you want to sell them the solution, which is the product, you first must must sell them on the big idea because otherwise they're just they're not going to be open to buying the product. Now, here's number three, and this is something somebody asked me recently. So I wanted to make sure I had this one in here. Is somebody asked like, "Hey, in my funnel, can I like I'm selling like the they had like four products literally, and they wanted to build like this this like." 15 or 30 day email follow up and basically just like mention all the products. And the problem with this is you're confusing your subscribers. Like each funnel needs to be specific on one product. And so what happens is they're like, you know, every two, three days they're mentioning a new product. There's some people out there that teach to do this. I don't think it's smart at all. For me, every funnel I create is one product, one, one, one solution base or what one funnel, one solution, AKA the product I'm selling. I don't mix it up and put product one, product two, product three, and the reason being is there's there's certain steps, there's certain objections you must overcome for your your potential customer to get them to buy. And when you start mixing in two, three, four different you know products to sell them, it's it's going to be tough to get them to make that buying decision. Now, so the first thing you want to know is what are you selling? And you know, as I just said, you can only promote one product in each funnel. So if you're promoting click funnels, then that whole funnel needs to be dedicated on basically, say, teaching people on the big idea of why they need a sales funnel. Because a lot of people, believe it or not, like, you know, especially in our marketplace, I'm pretty sure every one of you guys in this group are familiar with click funnels. But me and somebody else in the group outside were talking about this. Um, and then also Sebastian the other day is that not many people have click funnels. You think everybody does, but it's it's not even tap the potential of the marketplace. There's still hundreds of thousands and millions of people that could use the product that have never been exposed to it, nor do they even understand the concept of what a sales funnel is. If you would talk to, say, an offline business owner, they have no idea how to how to how to use a sales funnel. So whoever you're trying to to sell to and the type of product you're trying to sell, you have to first be very specific on selling them on the idea of that product before you actually mention the product. You have to help help them understand that big idea. Now, do you have content already? So here's something to think about for some of you. I know some of you guys, as I said, have blogs and you already have assets. So if you already have existing content, you can either straight use that content or maybe some of the stuff you actually just kind of freshen up old content. As I mentioned, what up, one of the funnels I'm building in my spare time right now is a funnel dedicated to selling Bluehost. And I'm going to show you how, how I did the research to do that. But I'm basically freshening up some of my old blog posts I created and just making them better. So instead of having to go back and create content from scratch, I'm using some of my old stuff. However, <clears throat> if you don't have any assets at this moment, you can create some on your own. You can just create it from scratch. As I said, it may take you two, three weeks, but once you create this, you know, you can make a lot of money from it. And realize it can be blog posts, it can be videos, it can be PDFs. Um, if you're like Ruth, it can be podcasts or audios. It, it doesn't have to be like just what I do. Now, the funnel I'm, I'm referring to is basically a free email course. This is out of all the, the funnels I create, and good to see you here, Derek. Um, out of all the funnels that, that I create, this is still my favorite like funnel. And the reason being is like, you know, there things like cheat sheets and, and, and things like that. It's good to get the email. Um, but it's, it's really industry specific. Like there's some, there's some industries that just don't respond well to cheat sheets. Um, now I want to, I want to make this clear that not every single, um, niche is going to work well with the free email course. But I, for the most part, I've seen them created and used uh, efficiently in a pretty much every major niche that I'm aware of. But, you know, I'm sure there's a niche out there that may be a, a different format. As I said, there's there's no such thing as a perfect funnel. But what I can tell you is for my business, this is the funnel that I use over and over again. It, it just dominates. So basically, the free email course is really meant to pre-educate and sell people on your product. So one of the things I didn't put here, and this is something I learned from Andre Chaperone, is that you want to take the role of the trusted advisor. For me, the first and foremost role is to build rapport, build trust, and then sell. So my whole goal with this, and I don't know if the person, I can't remember who is on, I think it was, uh, I'm trying to remember who it was, I think Todd. Um, one person inside of the group told me that my original boot camp training I created about three to four years ago, he went through that, that boot camp, and after that, he was sold. He didn't buy anything then, but he was sold on the idea when I have money, I'm buying something from Zach. Like he just knew that this is somebody I want to follow. This is somebody I trust. And then he become a customer later on. So realize like not everybody buys right away. A small percentage that go through your funnel are going to buy. And we're going to talk about the follow up later. But the whole goal is to build trust because if they trust you, even if it's not the right time for them to buy today, 
you're going to be in good mind with them so that way they're ready to buy in the future. Now, what you want to do for your email course, keep it stupid simple. Like people get caught up on headlines and, you know, using the right headline hack. And at the end of the day, I really like the funnels that are very simple. Um, I, I heard this from Alex Becker once before. He, he uses the analogy, do you want pizza? Here's pizza. So basically, want six-pack abs? Then, then basically, the free email course you're going to create is how to get six-pack abs in 30 days. You see, that's very specific. It's how to get what they want in a specific amount of time. That, that formula works really well. You know, how to launch your podcast in 30 days or how to launch your podcast in seven days. You know, something that's very specific to what you're teaching and then a time frame, it works really well. Now, um, once again, I know some of you guys are coming in um, a little bit late, but you can use a combination of email, blog posts, videos, or podcasts. You can even throw in PDFs. There's no perfect combination. So even if some of you guys have questions like, hey, will this work, will that work? I'm telling you that there, there literally is no perfect combination. Like for me, sometimes I do straight email, like literally no videos. Even though you guys know I'm the video guy, there's times that I'll be honest, I just don't feel like shooting videos for the free email course. So I just do it email and it's worked well with just email. I've done it with emails and video. I've done it with emails, video and PDF downloads. It, it really all works. <laughs> Daryl says, I need that course, six pack abs in 30 days. All right. So here, here's what I was showing you. So this funnel, like I actually switched over to click funnels for a while, um, and used their autoresponder. I wasn't really a fan of it. So I switched back to convert kit. So I didn't get a lot of people running through this when I did it, but understand this is what I was going to tell you earlier. I don't like to judge any funnel until I at least have a hundred people go through it. So you see this funnel once I switched it back from click funnels. And what I can tell you is the numbers were just spot on after having 2000 people go through this funnel and click funnels. But when I moved it over to convert kit, the numbers were the same and you see it starts at 77% open rate and all the way across the board, it stays steady at like 50%. So this is the kind of numbers that you want, right? This is, if you build the course the way I'm teaching you, even though you don't see the exact format, I'm going to teach you with the same headlines. <clears throat> Sometimes I play with my headlines. Remember what I said, there is no such thing as a perfect funnel. I'm giving you an outline to follow, but I also want you to use your brain and be creative and not be afraid to mess things up because champions do the extra mile. Like even if like their coach tells them like, Hey, this is what you do. They're like, you know what? I'm going to put in an extra hour. I'm going to put in an extra lap. They go the extra mile in order to, to, to learn, to get better. And that's their goal, right? So realize, don't be afraid to, to change things. I'm the, the format you see right here is exactly what I'm teaching you inside of this course. However, I, I want you to, to, to think freely. Don't, don't think just because I'm telling you the format needs to be like three steps to this or four steps to that, that the headlines need to be exactly that. You notice right here, I played around with the, the headlines and, and, the, and as I said, I tweaked it. Now, sometimes what I do is I start out with the format I'm teaching you as a baseline and then I start tweaking it because what's going to happen is maybe two or three emails, you're getting like 50% open and all of a sudden it dips to like a 15%. And then the first thing is probably the headline's bad, right? So you change the headline. Um, we'll talk about that stuff later, but don't be scared to, to test. Now, I want to show you some other funnels so you can see that like what I'm teaching you is not just working for me. It works for everybody. So I like using John Lee Dumas because he's following this exact format. Um, literally what I'm teaching you. Now, he doesn't necessarily use 100% the headline formats I'm giving you and, and the actual structure, but what he's doing is, is an email course. Um, a lot of his are very simple. It's literally just some emails and bullet points about basically what he's going to teach you in each lesson, and then it links to like a, a video that's about 10 to 15 minutes max each day, and it's just to sell whatever he's selling. So like, for instance, Funnel on Fire, that sells um, click funnels. Um the create a webinar that converts very, very self-explanatory, right? He's got a podcast or he's got a course on how to, how to sell with webinars. Um, his free podcast course, remember what I said, very specific, right? That, that podcast course is all about how to launch your podcast. He goes over the basics in the beginning of how to set a podcast up. And then of course, if you want to learn how to monetize the podcast, you want to learn how to take it to the next level. He's got a paid product. Same thing for his goal course and his mastery course. So every single funnel he creates you see what I said, it's one funnel, one product. So if, if you question what I said about creating multiple products in a funnel, here's a perfect example. He does it exactly what I'm talking about, where it's, it's literally one product, one funnel. And we'll talk about later, because I, I guarantee somebody's going to have this question. Well, Zach, what if I promote ClickFunnels and I also promote Mob or I have my own product, but I also have like a coaching program. Like how, how do I, how do I do this? How do I get people to different funnels? We're going to talk about that. It's, it's much easier than to think. 
Now, um, as I said, I, I, I've been working on creating a funnel to promote Bluehost, right? My goal is to basically get Bluehost to $20,000 reoccurring a month um, by the end of the year. That's my goal, right? So what I'm doing over the next 30 to 60 days, um, I'm basically building out this on my back end because my main funnel I'm working on right now is to sell Top Earner Mentor. So I'm not taking focus off that, but what I'm doing because I, I enjoy creating funnels, I think it's fun, I'm creating a really awesome funnel on how to sell Bluehost. It's a mix of blog posts, it's a mix of videos, it's a mix of email lessons. And as I said, you'll see my different funnels if you opt into different stuff throughout the year. None of them are the same. Some of them are all emails, some of them are emails and videos. I, I like to just mix and play around with it based on how I feel. So what I did to figure out like how do I find some good courses to reverse engineer, I just typed in like how to create a website and started going to different people's blogs and finding people that are making good money with hosting and then finding their email courses. It's literally that simple. Um, okay, so Daryl says, follow in your coattails on Bluehost. So this is exactly how you'd want to do it, bud. You literally would want to find people that already have successful blogs. Um, and I'm just going to show you guys really quick so you guys can see this. I'll just show you an example. So let me bring a browser window over here really quick. Let's see. I think it's like... I cleared my cache a minute ago, so bear with me for a second. Start blogging online. Yep, I think that's it. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Yep. And then let me try one more blog. Or is it the blog starter? Boom. Okay, so I used to have a site like this, guys. Um, I actually I actually deleted it. It's my one I have now. It's the free blog setup. But I originally created a version of this, and my goal with this is because I reverse engineered this guy before, and he runs Google AdWords to this. He runs Bing PPC to this, um, and he doesn't do any YouTube. So any of you guys that want to do this on YouTube, it's wide open. But the site is really simple. He literally has about, let's see, one, two, seven, yeah, like seven pages um, it shows step by step how to set up the blog. And then unfortunately I don't, maybe he does somewhere, but he doesn't have an email course. See what I would do personally, even though I built the site like this, I would, I would still would have my own dedicated email course to get people to opt into, to send them through, to train them because one, I'd want them on my, e on my email list so I can sell them other stuff. And I have more chances to push them back in there. Yep. Making sense of, of sense. We're going to go through that one in a minute too. Um, and then here's another one, startbloggingonline.com. So you see like right here, as soon as I land here, the free email blogging course. And this whole course, it's all geared towards selling this. So see, she has the stuff right here on how to set up the website, right? So she has the article, but you notice like right here, free blogging course. We click here. So give me a yes if you guys believe that you can do this. Like you, you, you see that you don't need to be special. You literally could model her landing page you could model the emails. You could model the blog posts. Give me a yes if you think that you could do this. Like, I'm telling you guys, this is a, this is a six-figure, multi-six-figure-a-year business with just what I'm showing you right here on, on hosting. Really, it could be more than that if you're really ambitious. This right here is, is, is literally something anybody can do. You need to figure out how to create, you know, a, a basic blogging course. Here you go. You Google blogging. How do I set up a blogging or how do I set up a blog? And then find some websites, opt into their funnels, go through it, create your own stuff. Rip, pivot, and jam. All right. So we're going to go on to the next one. So um, Daryl mentioned making sense of sense, right? This girl makes like $30,000 on average, kind of like Pat Flynn on, on, on blogging, Bluehost sells. So I'll be honest, what's funny like if you opt into hers now, here's what I want you to stop right now. If your brain says this, well, she says, you know, she shows examples of how she makes all the money with her blog and affiliate marketing. And I don't have that. You're going to see like when you opt into some of the people's funnels, they're not talking about like how they make money at all. They just talk about how they make money with affiliate marketing. So realize you can leverage that later down the line once you do, but there's absolutely nothing stopping you from creating the same course. And hers is very basic. Literally like each email, it's like, you could create it. You could create the whole like funnel. I'm serious in a weekend if you were a newbie. If you were brand new and had no experience, you literally could reverse engineer her whole funnel in a weekend. Literally, I'm telling you straight up. I created a crazy. Actually, I'm just going to show you. Um, I'm just going to show you. It's a tangent. I wasn't planning on doing this, but 
my blog is a bit of a mess because right now I'm redoing the bad boy, but I want to show you. So I, I'm in the middle of switching back over to Thesis WordPress theme. Um, but I built this. I haven't quite, quite got it done. But over the weekend, I just sat down and jammed out, and I already have probably half of the funnel done, and I'm creating it from cr complete scratch. And I'm going to show you like how detailed this blog post is. So let's preview this. And you can see this, this, is, this is me going through reverse engineering the best blog post on how to set up a website, and then I made my own version of it. So I, ha I don't have the video here. That's just a dummy video. But you can see it's literally like very detailed. Very detailed. I did all of this in a, in a day, this blog post. And all I did is I modeled off what other people did. And check it out. This is using Thrive Leads um, or Thrive Architect, I think, where it's like their plugin. And then it's basic questions people can ask. Um, where can I find a custom WordPress theme? Um, I'm not good at writing, or I'm not a good writer. What options do I have? Remember this right here. Note this down. I'm going to talk about it later about objections. So right here, I'm not a good writer. What should I do? It answers it. So what, what I'm doing is I'm using a lot of this stuff to overcome their objections or common questions I think they'll have. And I just modeled off other people. Like even myself at my level, I do this. Like you're completely capable of doing this. All right. So let's keep it going. So here's another one. 30-day um, list building challenge. So this one's all about building your list. I've opted into this before. I don't actually know the girl's name. I think it's like Natalie or something. I come across it randomly. But the whole the whole thing is about building your email list with like free traffic sources. And literally, it's just an email. And then every day, she has like a five-minute video sharing strategies with you to build your list. Um, Daryl says, do you think he has better SEO because domain has blogging in it? Um, I mean, I, I think obviously, yeah, that's, that's really good, but I don't think it'll matter. Like it just depends on what you're doing. If you are, if you're strictly doing content, um, then like content marketing only, like meaning no video, then yeah, that, that like having the blogging in there would be great. But like for me, it doesn't matter. Like I'm, I'm going to drive all my traffic from YouTube. Um, for the most part, I'm going to drive my traffic from building my list on paid ads. I'm going to drive my traffic from forums and then I'm going to push them there manually. So my blog, I'm not really going, like, whatever ranks in Google, that's awesome. But my goal is to basically generate traffic from forums, generate traffic from YouTube, generate traffic from Facebook ads, all 100% targeted traffic. And then what's going to happen is Google's going to see that I can, I can make it rain myself and bring my own traffic, and then they're going to start rewarding me with traffic because they see people there. So that, that's something to think about. Um, you know, if you couldn't get your, like, honestly, you're going to get traffic 10, you would get traffic 10 times faster if you just went to, like, say, the Warrior Forum, for example, right? And become a valuable member there, drive them back to your website and then get them to sign up to, to your, your email course and then push them to sign up for hosting. You'll, you'll get people there 10 times faster than just trying to build up blogging. You want to think of blogging as a long-term game. All right, so the types of content you need. So there's four types of content that we want to create um, for our funnel, right? We want to create education content, we want to create engagement content, so that means getting people to reply to the emails, getting people to comment. Um, peer value content, meaning nothing to pitch. It's just like some cool training, a tutorial, something that's like just awesome. And then marketing messages. These are where we actually pitch the product and like, hey, you need to buy this. Now, let's go over the types of content, and then I want to break these down in extreme examples um, at the very end, right? So the first thing we have is education. So your audience does not know why they should want or need what you're offering. You have to educate them. Remember what I said before, there's a lot of people that have no clue what ClickFunnels is. They have no clue what a sales funnel is. So the first step you'd want to do if you were teaching people to buy ClickFunnels is educate them on why they need a sales funnel and how to help them. Now, one thing to understand is this does not mean you have to teach them something new. Really, you just want to educate them on why your topic or niche is important. So I really suggest in the early stages, just keep it dummy friendly. Like don't, like it's okay to, to do some technical stuff, but what I can tell you, like if you guys notice, like one of the things I'm, I'm doing, like I've tested it. Like when I get really technical, say like in my live streams, like it loses people. The only people that really like engage with these technical live streams or these technical trainings are you guys. You guys paid to learn and so you're serious about it. In my free group, like the moment I start teaching stuff that I'm like, God, this is so awesome. Like this is the stuff I love. If, I don't know if you guys can hear the enthusiasm and the smile on my face, but like sales funnels I love because it makes you stupid money. So to me, this is the stuff like everybody should want to learn. And when I start teaching this stuff, it's just like snooze control. And then when I talk about more motivating topics and things that pump people up, they're all engaged. But this is the stuff that they should be learning. So what I would suggest 
is keep it really dummy friendly when you're taking people through your funnel. The other reason is if you try to throw too much information at somebody all at once and they're new, like most of the people that are in this group, you guys, you guys understand the basics, right? <laughs> Daryl says, I love stupid money. You guys understand the basics of what I'm talking about here. Like not all this stuff is new concepts to you. Maybe it's new concepts in the strategic way I'm teaching you, but you understand it. But if I was teaching this to a brand new newbie, this would like blow their brain up. Like they would be like, I, I, well, this is too confusing. How do I put this together? What the hell is a sales funnel? So realize when you're bringing people in that are new, right? You got to keep it really dummy friendly and really simple. <clears throat> now, here's an example. List building, which in my opinion is the sexiest thing on this earth. Like it literally is, is, is it's better than a woman to me. If you're a woman on here listening, I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's yes. So anyways, it's not a sexy topic. But most people don't really understand why you should even build a list. Like it, it is a sexy topic, but it's not sexy to people because they don't they don't understand. Like email? Like I gotta build email? Like they they don't they don't see the value in it, right? So before I would sell them a, a list building product or a course about building listing uh, building a list, I gotta sell them on the big idea. Like why do I why do I want a list? Why do I need a list? You know, is this is it really even relevant to my situation or to, to why I should care about this topic? So what you're doing is you're selling them on the idea of list building before you think about selling them on buying a product about list building. Give me a yes if this makes sense. <clears throat> now, intermittent fasting diet. So here's an example, right? So you guys know that I do fasting, at least I think most of you do because I talk about it quite a bit. Um, basically, fasting is where you don't eat for a minimum of like 16 hours. And then you basically eat in an eight-hour window. Um, <laughs> Daryl said, your analogy made me laugh. Well, Daryl, women have left me hanging, and my money has not left me hanging. So that's why I said it's sexy. So fasting is the diet that I do, right? And so basically the basic concept is that I don't eat for 16 hours, and it puts my, my, my body in a fat-burning furnace, right? It kicks my metabolism in overdrive. It gives me more energy because if you ever noticed, like around lunchtime, you start eating food, and you kind of get groggy, and your brain's feeling all foggy. Well, the longer you go without eating food, it puts you in like this hyperactive energy, and you just feel better. And so most people have all these misconceptions of if they've heard about fasting, right? So before I could sell the product that I want to sell, like if I had my own like product, say example, um, John Vasquez, which is in the group, right? He has a product called the 3T method, and it really is intermittent fasting. But before he can sell them on the concept of fasting, he first needs to educate them about fasting and how it works and how to use it and how it's improved his quality of life. If he just starts trying to sell them his fasting product, most people that have tried diets before, because let's be honest, most people have tried diets at least once in their life if they're probably 30 years old, if they've struggled with weight, and it didn't work for them. So therefore, they already have a negative um, opinion about losing weight. And the same thing is if they've also heard something about fasting and you know previously before, they, they think it's unhealthy. And so you got you to gotta first convince them that these things you've heard are completely not true, and this is why fasting is important. Um, Jimbo, do you eat before your workouts or after? I, I work out on an empty stomach. All right. So you must answer one question for your audience with your education content. And that's really, why should I care about this thing? Basically, they should know, like, why does this affect me? Why should I pay attention to what you have to say? Is this going to help make my life easier? Is it going to help make my life simpler? Um, is this something that could cause me pain? Is this something that if I don't know? It's going to affect my life in a negative way. <laughs> really, if, if it's something that can affect their life in a negative way, if they don't know about it to avoid it, or they don't know about this thing to keep their family safe or secure, for example, it's even better. If, it's, if it has a negative um, thing attached to it over a positive, people are, are motivated more by pain than even pleasure. So nonetheless, whatever you're selling, you got to first educate them on it before you can actually sell them on the product. Now, engagement content. Let's talk about engagement content. So the purpose of this is really just to involve your audience and ask them for a response. Do you guys even notice like right now when I, when I say, like this is an example of even engagement content right here, an example. I've just gotten the practice of doing this so much. You know, you hear me say, say yes, comment below. Um, that's, that's all it is, guys. You want to get your audience engaged because if they get engaged, if you get them to say yes, if you get them to, to respond, if you get them to be engaged with what you're doing or what you're about or what you care about, they're going to be more likely to buy your stuff. So you want to get them engaged and you want to get them to feel like they're a part of your brand. They're a part of, you know, your community. They're a part of uh, you. You know, they want to attach themselves to you. 
This is, this is going to get you 10 times more results in your email list when you do this. Now, it, all it is, as I just said, you send out a video or an email and you just say, hey, comment below or answer a question. You know, sometimes I like to say, um, you know, what do you guys think about this? Um, let me know what you think below. And so it can be you can actually act, have them answer a question. It doesn't just have to be like a yes. But the whole point is just to get them to engage with the content piece that you're doing. So if it's video, comment below the video. So example, we could use that on YouTube. We could use that on a live stream. Um, if it's if it's your blog post, you know, leave a comment, a comment in the comment section. If it's your email, hey, reply to the email. We'll talk about that more later. Now, one of the things you could do, here's an example. What's the biggest thing you struggle with when it comes to X? What's one of the biggest things you struggle when it comes to losing weight? Um, hit reply and let me know. I'll respond, I promise. Um, one of the things I do in my niche especially is I say yes, or I'll say something like, you know, if you think this is a trick, yes, I actually do respond to every email. And the reason I do that is just because I know that most people, um, they've responded, or like, you know, they've tried to re like ask a guru a question and the guru never responds. And if they do, it's to a product. Um, so sometimes I'll even put, yes, I'll respond and I won't even try to sell you anything. Um, it just, it's going to depend on what industry you're in. Um, but some industries have more skepticism than others. Um, if you're in like a niche, that's like totally outside of making money online, like people, they, they just, they respond easily and they don't have such skepticism as in the make money niche. Now, here's another one. What's your biggest fear about trying to do X? You know, this, this applies to anything. What's your biggest fear about trying to build a list? What's your biggest fear about trying to lose weight? What's your biggest fear about, you know, trying to, you know, get this new job? You know, whatever the thing you're selling is, you, 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 you just put that in there. And then, you know, let me know in the comments. Um, here's another one. Why do you want to do X? Um, is it to feel more confident? Is it to have more confidence? Is it to get more freedom? Is it to help your family? Is it to, you know, you know, any kind of example you can get to think, you know, why, why is this important to you? Why do you want to do it? Hit, hit reply and let me know. So you can, you can come up with a million different questions based on your product, but the whole important concept you want to do is just get them to reply because what you're doing is you're building rapport. Like most people do not do this with their email list and this is why they don't, like they literally do not get results. I want to show you something really quick so we can use an example here. Because um, I think real life examples really explain a lot better than just talking about things. So Steve Howe, he's a member of this group, right? So if we go to YouTube and let me try to find his video first. How to wholesale real estate. So he, he uses this concept because he knew how powerful it was from hearing me do it. So he's got a new video ranking there. Good job, Steve. Where's your old one? Man, the old one fell off. Well, good thing he made a new one. Doot, doot. Bear with me for a second, guys. I'm trying to find the video. I guess we're just going to have to go to his channel and find it. So I want to show you the concept of, of what he did. Videos, where is it, where is it? There we go. Oh, that is the old one. He just replaced the thumbnail. Man, I feel stupid now. All right, so here is his video um, that he created on the in 2014. This video alone has made him $350,000. One video. One video, guys. One video. I'm going to repeat that like three more times. One video. One video. <laughs> I hope you understand the power of this concept I've been teaching about YouTube. So he basically created this video and look, Steve was not a rock star then. Like, I, I don't think he's going to get mad at me for saying that we're really good buddies. So when he started this, he literally, look, you can see, you can barely see him. The lighting, if you can see my mouse right here, it's like a pole lamp in the background, so you can barely see his face. We always have the joke, the inside joke between each other. He was like, you know, in his mom's basement filming the video and, and just trying to get his business up and running. His webinar replay was literally a Microsoft Word document where he just, look, it's notes for himself. He's literally reading stuff for himself. And then he goes through 930 comments. Here's what he's doing. Look at this. What he's doing is going and replying to every single question. Now, here's a here's the thing you can see. When somebody replies, if you reply again, it gets them to reply again a lot of times and it builds more engagement. Every single reply counts as engagement. This is just for a YouTube ranking factor, just so you know. And then, of course, like he just keeps it going. Every single one. Look, reply, reply. And you notice what he's doing? He's hearting every one. The reason this is important, where you heart somebody's comment, it sends them a notification to let them know that, that basically you, you responded to their comment and you liked it. So 
you know, by doing this, it gives them a notification that you like their comment, brings them back, and then keeps the engagement going. But you notice he's doing exactly what I said here. And what he's doing, he's building rapport. So in his niche, just like my niche, the gurus treat people like crap, right? You'll buy a $25,000 course and they still really have nothing to do with you. He knows that. And so therefore he uses that as his, his, his unique angle. He uses that as his way to stand out in the niche and he did this from day one. So understand as just, uh, as Jimbo just said there, engagement is absolutely key. Now, moving on along peer value content. Let's define that really quick. So basically, peer value content is meant, meant really just to win your customers over by showing them how smart and helpful you are. That's it. Like I just showed you a minute ago, like if, if you're like, well, Zach, I don't, I don't really have any value to add. I just shown you how you can get value and reverse engineer somebody else really quick. You literally can go and opt into somebody's email course, you know, study it and make your own version. Bam. It's, it's really that easy. Now, peer value content is not meant to be a sales pitch. It's not. But it can be the most important piece of your whole funnel. And the reason being is it's building goodwill. You guys hear me say this all the time. Trust is the most important concept to marketing. I love direct sales, um, or I, I should say direct response marketing. I'm all about you know direct response marketing. But with, with when you pair that with somebody trusting you, you don't even have to be that great of a marketer. You literally can, can suck and still get sales, and it's just because they like you. So the content is to build goodwill, show your expertise, and show how much value you have to offer them. And, you know, Johnny is on this webinar right now. At least I think he is. He was commenting a few minutes ago. And he even said that he come across me back when I was like really just really just starting to, I don't know, I wouldn't say I was getting traction. I was just starting to really get my feet wet, I'd say, to, so to speak. But I did a video on how to do email marketing. And I, I, I don't know why. I wish I wouldn't have deleted all my old videos. Like that video got like 30 or 50,000 views alone. And I deleted all my old videos. But that video I created, he come across because he was trying to figure out how to do email marketing. And that's what brought him into my sales funnel. And then he ended up buying Mob, which is, you know, a $2,000 plus program. So you guys see this, this stuff is very important. I didn't have anything to sell on that. That, that was just pure value to teach. That was it. Something to, to give some cool content. Now, pure value content can be a preview of what you have to offer. Um, this could be a lesson from your paid product or a peek on the inside of what they will get to experience with the paid product. So if you guys are an affiliate and you don't have your own product, you can do this by kind of showing the inside of the product and showing off, you know, like the bonus package without pitching it. So you could show like, for instance, um, I think it was Jonathan asked me this morning, um, he wants to make his own dedicated funnel. So Jonathan, if you're watching this later, this would be how you would make your own dedicated funnel for click funnels, exactly what I'm teaching here. And then what you could do is just show some of the, the training and stuff that you learn inside of, you know, the affiliate products. So here, here's another example of what you can do. Go through, um, if you don't have any value, write, write this down, guys. If, if right now you feel like you're not, you're nobody, you don't have any value to add, go inside of one of the paid products that you're promoting, learn something from it, take some notes, and teach it. Here's an example right now. You're watching this, this whole training on how to create a web or how to create a sales funnel that will create money on autopilot, right? You could take some notes, like say the best, say take 10 minutes and make a video on the best tips that you learned from this and go make a video. And that could be part of your funnel where you're teaching about the concepts of building a sales funnel. It can be that easy. So you can go inside that paid product, learn something from it, summarize the best points, and that's a piece of content. You can read a book, you know, example, a book or something, it's on your niche, and you can summarize what you learned in that book. That can be a piece of content. It's, this does not need to be that hard. So I want you to realize right now you're an expert. Congratulations. Just tell yourself, I'm an expert. And that's, that's, that's literally all it is. You just have to give your, your, yourself permission to play big. That's it. Once you do that, it's game over. Now, what you want to do in this part is don't hold anything back. You literally give your best stuff to your customers up front. Literally give your best stuff up front. I don't think there is such thing as giving away too much because I, I've done this before. When I first started out, I literally, I literally gave away everything I knew and people still bought it in a product. I would put it together and like they would buy the same product that I, I, give away for free in my, my free Facebook group at the time and YouTube. Like they, they're not going to go through all your content. Most people will not. Most people are not going to spend all their time going through everything to try to piece it together. They just want the step-by-step -step bulletproof system. So realize, you know, I want to, I want to point out something really quick without going too much of a tangent. What a webinar is, you're, you're literally kind of laying out the blueprint and the, or you're literally laying out the system, I should say, like how the system works as an overview. And then you're selling them the blueprint. Does that make sense? That's, that's really kind of what you're doing with the sales funnel too. A sales funnel is kind of like a webinar, but it's just like, it's got a little bit more value going through it. That's it. 
So you're, you're basically showing them the overview and how things fit together. And then you're blueprinting and selling them the solution. That's, that's all it is to it. Now, to go back to, to, to the content, right? The pure value content. Frank Kern coined this term. He calls it results in advance. And it's really just giving goodwill up front before you ask for money. You're building trust, showing them some cool stuff they can do. And then you sell them the solution later. Now, marketing messages. Marketing messages. <laughs> Thanks, Jimbo. I don't even need to say it. I, I, I normally have. I normally say smash that like button, but Jimbo's got it covered. All right, so marketing messages are, are the emails or videos that touch on your customer's pain points and the benefits of your product, and it sells your product. So one thing I want to really highlight really quick right here is, is, is the pain points. One of the things you want to do throughout this funnel, and we'll talk about that later, is, is I use the term all the time. I learned this from Ben Settle, and he talks about rubbing salt in the wound. And so what he means is, is you got to find the pain for your industry. You got to find the pain that, that just drives them crazy and, and you rub that in. And I know this may sound bad for some people, but understand everybody right now is walking around in their own little hell. Like even myself, right? And all, no, if anybody tells you that, that their life is perfect, they're probably lying because there's almost probably one point of their life that they would like to be better or there's something in their life that they would like to, to make better. And, and so if, if you have that pain, right, if somebody doesn't point that out for you, sometimes you ignore it. So an example for me last year, right, is when I wanted to lose weight, you know what I did? I would not look in the mirror. I would just like, like I literally had fat rolls on my neck. Like if I moved my neck, it would like pinch together and I felt disgusting, but I would just try to like ignore it. And it wasn't until I was watching a YouTube video where the guy basically just hit me right in the stomach with it saying there's no excuse. Like if you hate like where you're at right now, you hate looking in the mirror, you hate how you feel, you don't have any energy, it's time to change it right now. And if it wasn't for him pointing out that pain and rubbing salt in the wound, I would have not set out on that journey to change it. So understand that there's nothing wrong with this. This is marketing. You have to rub the pain and rub salt in the wound to help them see they have a problem so you can sell them the solution to help them. This is something that I don't know if you struggle with, but when I first started in marketing, I felt like marketing was evil. And I had to realize that like money doesn't exchange hands, you know, until somebody understands that they need help. And you can't help someone until they get the product that can help them. So therefore, you have to be able to guide them to that. And how you do that is you point out the pain. Now, marketing messages can be created to feel like value content. Like some of you guys probably can, I don't know, give me a yes if like when you guys have bought things from me, you didn't really feel like I was selling to you and you actually like that I sold you. Like I could be wrong. Maybe some of you guys in here didn't feel that way. But if you do things right, like people don't get upset that you sell them. Um, they actually like enjoy the process. Sometimes they'll even say things like, man, this, just this, this, I know you like, I bought the product, but it just like, it, like every piece of the, the content was awesome. Or it just, it didn't even feel like you sold to me. You know, if you do it right, people will be excited when you sell to them and it won't offend them. It won't make them mad. Now understand you're not going to be able to please everybody. If, if you guys start really building your list, you're going to get some people just prepare for it now that are going to respond to your emails with some very nasty things. But those people don't matter. They're, you don't know them. You're never going to see them. But for the most part, if you do this right, a lot of the people are going to be happy as they go through your funnel because they're getting awesome content. And regardless if they buy or they don't buy, they're going to like you and trust you because of the fact that you put this together. Now, <clears throat> example, six common myths about your product topic. So, you know, six common myths about um, intermittent fasting, you know, right? This could be an example of a marketing message. And we're going to go through the structure. I'm just giving you examples really quick. Um, but, but this is really used to overcome their objections or preconceived opinions and reframe their beliefs about the product you're trying to sell. So a lot of your marketing messages, even though you're selling, right? Even though you're selling to them, you're trying to, to basically overcome their objections at the same time and reframe their beliefs. This is why I told you earlier about getting the book Expert Secrets. He talks about this in deep detail because most people, let's say, for example, like they, they've tried losing weight before, right? Almost everybody in their, their, their time frame, let's say if they're like, let's, let's raise the age to about 40. As somebody at 40, they probably struggle with the weight problem at that point, right? And so they probably attempted to do a diet and they have negative like opinions and negative thoughts about dieting because they've tried it before and it didn't work for them. So when you're trying to sell them your weight loss product, you got to help reframe their beliefs. And one of the things you're going to do is you're going to take the blame off of them. You're basically going to point out things like, you know, you may have failed because of this. 
or um, the six you know common myths about your product, you could be talking about myths about diets that basically the reason people fail is because of these six myths and you didn't know about it. Or these, these myths are things that you thought that aren't true, and this is why you failed because you believed in this, but this is the real way you should have been doing things. What you're trying to do is break down the way they think and reframe it the way you want them to think so that way they can buy your product. Does this make sense? Give me a yes if you understand this. If not, I'll, I'll find a way to to reframe it or re-say it so that way it makes sense to you. Um, Kumar, you said you just kick and block them. I'm assuming you're talking about like haters if they if they just say nasty things. Yeah, I mean I, I just unsubscribe them. I, I don't I don't even reply. I don't I don't care to to partake in negative stuff. So if people say say mean things, I block them. If it would be on my YouTube channel, I wouldn't even respond. I just block them. Some people like to instigate it. That that's personally not my style. I'm not really a person that likes arguments. I don't I don't like yelling. I don't like drama. I just I just block them. All right, cool. So you guys got it. So the next one. Three biggest mistakes people make when they do X and how to avoid them. Now, do you remember what I, I, I said to write down where I said um, about the three mistakes people make with funnels? Do you guys realize I purposely did that? <laughs> I, I, I did exactly what I'm talking about here, even in this presentation. I talked about the three biggest mistakes people do when they build sales funnels. So this is the same thing you could do when you're teaching something about your thing. I'm teaching you about how to create a sales funnel that will make you money on autopilot, right? And I showed you the three biggest mistakes people make to point out things that maybe you thought. Maybe it's things, for example, like if you've built a sales funnel before, maybe you've done one of those mistakes. Um, I've all, or maybe it's something you even kind of are aware of, or maybe it's things that you are not aware of, but what I'm doing is I'm educating you up front. Like you should not do this thing, but what you want to do is the way that I'm teaching you. So really what you got to ask is how does your product help people avoid these mistakes? Um, realize at the end of the day, all your product is, is the solution to their problem. So in this, this scenario right here, this is the solution to avoid those mistakes we talked about. Now, What's holding you back from taking action? So understand, th these, these, these are just different types of marketing messages. I actually have a format how you put this together. It isn't like you just whip up random things. Um, there's actually a structure, and I'll show you it here in a minute. I'm just showing you the different types of marketing messages that I use personally and things that have worked well for me. <clears throat> so what's holding you back from taking action? So this content is really is, is best to, to really find out um, why they're not buying. This is towards the end of your funnel or basically you're like, hey, what's the deal? Like, I, you know, I've been giving you all this off some information. You know, I've did my best to educate you on this. Like, I'm, I'm clueless. Like, why have you not joined? And you can word it however you want, however you feel comfortable. But one of your goals is really to get them to reply. And something that's cool about this is, is that you can actually get sales on this email. So when, when people reply, <clears throat> maybe sometimes they're just sitting on the fence like they, they want to do it. But something's holding them back. Something just doesn't, something doesn't make sense to them or something they feel like, yeah, that won't work for me because, and then because of the fact that you reply to them, they like, man, this person actually cares. And then you're able to basically overcome their objection and say, no, no, that's not how that works. Here's how it actually works. And by doing that, you'll get sales. It works for me like that all the time. Not always, but quite a bit. Um, this also, this email works really well. And then I'm going to talk about how to do this later, but you want to kind of really be a non-marketer if this makes sense in this email. You want to kind of be like like a real person. You want to show them that you're a real person. You can sympathize with, you know, what held you back. You want to share a story. This goes back to why I told you to get expert secrets because it teaches you how to tell engaging stories. You want to share maybe a story with them in this email about how, you know, when you first started out, um, I think, yeah, I see Doug. Doug's on here. So an example, um, Doug str struggled with confidence that he has value to add and, and how he's going to compete with all these people on YouTube. Hopefully, Doug, you don't mind me sharing this. So what Doug could do is he could write an email if he was selling a video marketing product and he could say, hey, look, you know, when I first started out, I'll be honest, I was following all these young kids and like, you know, all these whippersnappers. <laughs> and he's like, so I didn't think that like I was going to be able to compete with that because like, you know, I, I just don't know all the stuff they know. And, you know, I, I don't I, I've not made any money or whatever. You know, he could share his personal story about how he had confidence problems of creating his first pieces of content because he thought that he didn't have any value to add to the world. And so now what he's doing is he's bringing himself down to their level and he's showing them like, look, I'm just like you. I'm not anybody special. Now, 
Here's an example. Um, a content piece showing or talking about the benefits um, of you or someone got after using the product or service. So this is before and after, basically testimonials. And we're going to talk about this later, but if you don't have any testimonials for your product, so John Basquez, if you're watching this later at some point in time, um, example for you, you're starting to get testimonials now, so you can actually use somebody else's testimonials. But in the early stages, the best thing is to be your own testimonial. If you have your own product, so be a product of the product and then leverage other people's testimonials as you help them. That's what I've done over the course of my career. If you're affiliate marketer and you basically promote somebody else's products, borrow testimonials from the product you're promoting. Does that make sense? Give me a yes. So if you don't have testimonials and you're affiliate, um, you borrow testimonials from, from somebody that's already in the product that's already got it. Th this, is, this is a very, very important thing because you know most people want to see whatever they're buying it, like it got results for other people. Now, something else to think of is using multiple testimonials if you can. Um, you want to use testimonials of different types of people. So you'll notice I've used testimonials in the past of like Cynthia. Um, and the reason I use Cynthia is because anybody that's Asian naturally is going to resonate with her. Um, a lot of women are going to resonate with her. Um, I use Steve Howell because, you know, he's like this like really mellow dude, just really chill. Almost if anybody hates him, I don't, I don't, they must be a bad person because he's a likable guy. Like, you know, I, I use different people to show different backgrounds and different stories because not every single person is going to resonate with, with that specific person. So <clears throat> what I like to do is use a variation of testimonials. So that way one of those testimonials and stories will usually resonate with someone. Now, how to put it all together. So now we're going to break it down and this is where we're going to actually get into the formats, um, of, of each, each email and how it works. So this is the basic format, value, value. Those are no pitches for the most part, pitch, value, pitch, and then a hard pitch. Now I want you to realize out of the gate, <clears throat> this is usually seven to 10 emails. That's how I design it. Um, it can be as little as three emails. It can be five emails. It can be 20 emails. I've honestly done it in all different stages. I've had, I've had funnels that are like 25 emails. I, I don't usually like designing them that long out of the gate. Um, for the most part, because of the fact that like, if, if, if they don't go through the first three to four really well, you know, I showed you there's, there's like a 50 to 70% open across the board. If, if people are not responding to the emails, like in the first five to seven, like that, me just writing up 25 emails would have been just suicide of my time. Because if for some reason they don't make it through very well in the beginning, maybe I got the whole messaging wrong. So then I wrote 25 emails and created 25 different content pieces, you know, so what I like to do is start small. So my average funnel is about seven days, but the biggest thing that you want to focus on as we've talked about is hitting their emotional triggers and basically inspiring them to take action. So how you do that is you really focus in on the pain. Like I talked about before the pain, the problem that they're going through. Now here's four things you need to know, write this down guys or screen cap it. <clears throat> um, uh, I don't know how to screen cap on, on PC, but if you if you have a Mac, it's 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 uh you know the Mac button shift and and four um, PC you're you're on your own. I think it's like screen share or something. Screen print, <laughs> basically screen share it or write it down. <clears throat> so these are the four things that you need to know. Number one, what is the end result that your ideal customer wants to achieve? So this is like the outcome. Um, you know, and sometimes I want to let you know this is deeper than what you think. So an example, like in the make money niche, you think somebody wants to just make money, but I can, I can use an example of somebody in here that I know personally is Daryl Stout. Daryl wants to make more money, but he doesn't want to make more money just to get rich and drive Lambos and have a fancy luxurious house. Maybe he wants that one day, but his number one desire is to make more money to give his daughter a better life. So realize, um, there's usually more deeper meanings to what the outcome or the end result is for somebody and what that looks like. And you'll learn this better as you go, whatever industry you focus on, you're, you're going to be able to, you know, between doing market research, which I have trainings inside of Top Earner Mentor and how to do that. But also you'll, you'll start to get feedback from your customers the longer you're in the niche and you'll start to understand their, their personal desires much more. But trying to get a base understanding of what their ideal um, outcome or their, their end result they want to achieve is very good before you start creating any content. Number two are what steps they must take to get the end result. These are like the roadblocks they must overcome. So I learned this from Frank Kern years ago, and he gave an example about how, you know, he did a survey to his email list and he surveyed people. Literally, they've spent like $50,000 on information products, right? Like literally spent $50,000 on information products, not made a dime, and they've never taken a single action, not even attempted anything. 
when he surveyed them, like, why have you not done anything? Their problem was like, well, I don't know how to set up a website. <laughs> and he was completely blown away. So what he did in one of his, his funnels is he, in the very beginning, he showed them like how to set up a website and with a couple clicks of a button. Like it's literally that simple in WordPress. And so when I created my very first boot camp training, what I did is I taught them, you know, one of the first things like, hey, you need a website. It's like a standard. Like even if you're not even going to blog, it's something useful. Like, you know, example right here. We need we need a website ideally because you can use the website for some of your content pieces for your funnel, even if you're not even going to blog. So what you want to do is map out what are the roadblocks that they must overcome in order to reach their goal. Example and make money niche would be like, okay, you need a website. They need to learn how to build, you know, a squeeze page. They need to have some kind of freebie to give away to build their list. They need to have something to sell. And then, of course, they need traffic. It's like the steps they need to take to get there. Number three, what can you give them as information that will move them closer to the result, even just one step closer? I just gave you an example um, in, in number two is like when I built that, that original boot camp, the, the, the one step I helped move them closer to the goal was just showing them how easy it is to set up a website so it doesn't have to be overly complicated. Number four, what is their biggest fear that they have that is preventing them from getting the end result? Find the pain once again. So this is an example here. Remember what I told you about like losing weight? Um, usually people like for their pain is, is, you know, it's, it's deeper than actually like losing weight, right? It's, it's how that makes them feel. It's their confidence. Maybe if they're single, they feel like they're not, they're not ever going to be able to find anybody because nobody's going to find them attractive. You know, you want to really figure out what is it that's eating them up inside based on what, what the actual niche is. If it's weight loss, there's something deeper than I just want to lose weight. If it's the make money niche, it's something deeper than making money. If it's, you know, dating and relationships it's, or health, you know, there, there's something deeper than the actual thing that you think it is usually. Now, we're going to talk about the sequence overview, and then we're going to break down what each email will be. Now, once again, we're, we're about, I think now, we're like the three, no, let's see. We're probably a little over halfway point, maybe three-fourths. And at this point, I want to, I want to point out that you may have to watch this two or three times in order to do it. But I guarantee you, if you had to watch this like three times in one day, took a bunch of notes, and then worked for two or three weeks to make this, you're you're going to be 99.9% .9 ahead of people that have ever tried to make money online. Because I guarantee you, most people never make it this far. They never do this because they're like, man, this is a lot to take in. So I want to I want to know right now, give me a, a one. Give me a one in the chat box. There's 11 of you on here. How many of you are going to commit that you're going to build this? How many of you are going to commit that you're going to build your own funnel? Not the funnel that I've given you, but you're going to commit this in the next couple months. You're going to build your own funnel, not just leveraging mine. Like I created the funnels that I have to help you get up and running. My goal is to help you become a top earner, to help you become self-sustainable and not need me. So I want to see how many of you are actually committing out in the public that you're going to learn to master this before we move forward. Either there's a really long delay for this live stream or nobody wants to commit that they're going to do it. All right, all right. Now, it, it, for whatever reason, it just all of a sudden just spit out all the, 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 the people committing. All right, good, good. I'm seeing the ones now. Darn you live streams. Facebook is playing with my emotions. All right, so I can continue forward. So the first one, and you guys, if you guys have opted into my funnels, you've probably seen this. It's helped me help you. And the reason I use this headline, really what this is, is it's kind of it's kind of just setting the frame. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But I, this is one of the best headlines I've used. You know, I showed you earlier where it was like a 70%. I've tested all different headlines um, for the first email. And hand like I've, I've tested like, hey, this is your free download. And I think it's because so many people use that when people opt into their list. But the help me help you just stands out like, what do you mean help me? Um, it just, It gets the open, right? And really the whole goal of this email for me is to set the frame and I let them know what I stand for, what I believe in, what they won't, what they won't see from me, which is the typical BS of spamming every offer. And then of course, you know, I, I want to ask them like, what's your biggest struggle? You know, this is, this is your, one of the, probably the most valuable emails, one of the most valuable pieces of re real estate in your business, because this builds the rapport from day one, like just getting them to reply. The people that reply 
are going to become buyers. I wish I would have put the screenshot in here, but I've done it before where like I even go out of my way where like when somebody replies, I shoot like a quick five minute video um, personally for them. And when I say like, like, I mean, personally for them, it's not a video that's like generic and I send it to everybody. Like if, if Al Sides replied and said, Hey, you know, I'm struggling with this. I would shoot him a video and give him some tips. Personally, I would upload it to Dropbox with his name on it, his first and last name, and I would send it to him. And I've had people literally freak out thinking that, that literally, um, it, it they literally thought that it, it was, it was a joke. They didn't even open it for like two or three days because they thought it was just going to be me pitching them. And then they seen somebody else comment in the Facebook group saying, man, Zach replies with a video. This is crazy. And so the girl's like, huh, he actually replied like maybe it wasn't a pitch. So she goes back and then she even said she felt stupid that she didn't she didn't open the email sooner. And so basically what happened was is that that built that instant relationship. And the one guy that I replied to with a video, he bought like a thousand dollar product three days later. So trust me, this is very, very powerful by just getting somebody to reply. You're building that rapport with them right out of the gate. Number two, um, and, and, and just to clarify, the first email is usually, it's really just education and engagement. So we're just some basic education, um, you know, pre, pre-educating them and then getting them to engage. Um, the, the second one, three reasons why you need to X, Y, Z. And this is like three reasons why you need to do the fasting diet. Basically what you're doing is you're educating them on why they need to do whatever your thing is or whatever you're trying to sell them on. This is just pure education. There's no pitching here. And, and something I want to point out really quick. So I know people are going to think like, okay, I got to follow this exact format. Remember what I said? I want you to, 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 to be feel free to, to experiment. This could be six reasons. It could be five reasons. It could be seven reasons, whatever, whatever you want to make it. It can be 21 reasons. Uh, it doesn't have to be like the exact thing. You can even play with the headline. This is just the basic structure that I like to follow. Now, number three, how to tutorial or training. Um, this is just pure value. No pitch. This is really just to get, build goodwill and give them some cool, cool stuff. Um, number four, the six common myths about X, Y, Z. So basically what you're doing here, this is actually a marketing pitch and, and we're going to define like, like the pitch. Like when I say pitch, it's like, you're, you're telling them like, Hey, this is like what I do in my product here, or this is why this product will help you. It's not like a hard, like pitching them like, Hey, this is closing down. You need this. This is why you need it. It's, it's a very light pitch. Cause what you're trying to do is just keep introducing them to the product all through the funnel. So what we're doing here, our main, our main point of this one, remember what we talked about earlier? I gave you examples of the common myths. We're really just trying to break down their beliefs. So if they had these, these, these ideas that they, they, maybe they've heard about the fasting diet somewhere and they've heard these things online and these are things that you know are true, like untrue, like example, people say it's, it's un, unhealthy to fast for 16 hours or you can't fast, you know, long term. You can only do it for a short period of time because it'll mess up your health. Um, you know, I know for a fact, I've watched videos on YouTube where it actually corrected people's health problems by doing fasting. So what I would do is I'd create all these different, these, these six different things that are, are, are common myths I see about fasting. And I'd break down the, the belief that none of these are true. And this is the, re- this is the real answer to those things. So what we're doing is we're really just reframing their beliefs and then telling them like, hey, this is why my product will help you do this. Now, number five is the three biggest mistakes. And then this is a soft pitch. Um, And and I want to also point out too really quick, I sometimes mix more pitches than, than like I put value. So one of the things I like to do is pretty much like pitch more, like quite a bit. I usually, if there's seven emails, I'm probably going to pitch about four times at least, but I put a lot of value in there, a lot of value. So it may be a full on blog post, but I'm pitching, but it's a really light pitch. Remember what I said? It's not like a hard pitch. It's like saying that's what my product does, or that's what my product solves this problem. So number five, the three biggest mistakes. We talked about that earlier where I said, you know, the three big mistakes that people do with sales funnels, Um, the three biggest mistakes people make when they try to do intermittent fasting, you know, whatever your thing is, you, you, you make the mistakes that are common things you see in your niche. Number six, how to tutorial or training. So this is another soft pitch. Um, you know, this is this like some light, some content to teach them something cool and then link into your product. And an example, if I was teaching about say click funnels, maybe what I would do, um, and this is in, in number six, usually on day six, this is where I like to do like, like I've been doing it lately. It's worked. Uh, it's, I think it's going to work really well because people like the iPad training. I'm showing an overview of like how a sales funnel comes together, how a sales funnel actually works, how a sales funnel makes you money. And I'm drawing out the, 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 the actual process of, of what it looks like as a big mountaintop view. So it's like training with just a very light pitch saying, Hey, you know, if this, if you want to do this, you know, check it out below. Number seven, what's holding you back. We talked about that earlier, but this is really just asking for a response and, and reply. And then this is our, our chance to overcome their objections. 
Number eight, this is the final one, is answers to your questions. I usually always use the headline, open up answers to your questions. And the reason being is like, some people are going to think, what do you mean answers to my questions? Um, but this, this email is really used to, to basically, you know, pitch them to use testimonials if you have them. And it's really to let them know like, Hey, this is, this is, this is the last um, chance to buy. Um, you need this product and here's why. So the real thing is the pitch is really meant to let them know why they need it. Um, and to buy the product you're recommending right now. And, and another thing to keep in mind, even if you guys are an affiliate, some of the things I've, I've done before when I'm promoting affiliate products is to, to use limited time bonuses. So not on all of my bonuses that I create, when I create like a bonus package for an affiliate offer, I don't always make all of them evergreen. Some of them I make a limited time and then I shut them down. So if you do that, it works like gangbusters because when you actually use scarcity and you stick to it, like, hey, there's only 100 copies, you know, for this, people just buy like crazy on that last day. It's absolutely insane. I'm telling you, when you do like a product launch and you're doing like $50,000 plus, um, it's absolutely insane to watch your PayPal account on that last day because people just freak out thinking they're going to miss it. Now, I want to go over um, a few things here uh, on the sequence. So number one, you want to show results um, or big, benefit, uh, big benefits if possible, depending on your industry. So I talked about this before. If you don't have results from the product you're promoting, just borrow it. Borrow it from you know the affiliate offer or whatever product you're doing. Look at the sales page. Um, if they have a Facebook community or a group, try to get some screenshots if that's allowed. Now, make sure you check. Like I know, like for example, ClickFunnels, they don't allow this. I know, for example, like Mob, they don't really care, at least not that I've seen. Everybody does it. But in ClickFunnels, it actually says in their TOS, uh, their terms of service, that you can't do this. I was going to do it, and then I, I read it, and I was like, okay, I'm staying away from that. So check on whatever program you're promoting if you're an affiliate, if that's allowed. Now, an example of what I could do here is I could say by switching on a high protein diet and lifting weights, I was able to lose 15 pounds more than when I was doing the low carb diet and just doing cardio. And so if I was selling my own product on fitness, right, I could just show myself as the, the testimonial. I could show my before and after picture and then I could talk about, you know, why by doing the high protein diet and lifting weights, um, I, made, I, I got a better result. Um, the second thing is you can always add more value. So basically what I mean is you can add more content pieces. Just like I said before, this is a baseline format, guys. This isn't this isn't hard written in stone. It doesn't mean you have to do it this way. Um, you can add in 15 days if you want. It, it all comes down to you. But I really suggest to start at like the seven to 10 days and, and see how the, the funnel is responding before you get crazy with it. Now, number three is to always focus on your customer's pain points and desired outcome. We talked about that earlier, but people are more motivated to solve a pain than they are to, to get something that's pleasurable. So figure out what, what is really bothering them is it their confidence level because they're overweight is it you know their spouse is you know saying things to them to make them feel bad about themselves is it they're single and they don't feel like they can ever get it get you know get somebody to, to date them because they don't feel attractive whatever it is you got to figure out what that pain is um, and, and and then you basically position your product as a solution to help them solve that problem now this is going to be a baseline format that a lot of you are going to want to follow right a lot of you guys are going to want to do this, um, and this is this is a base format, but it, it's not solid. Remember what I said before, and I don't mean not solid, but it's not like set in stone. You, you can change it around, you can play around with it, but this is a good format to start at when you get started. Because if you don't if you don't know how to, to frame up where you pitch more often, it sometimes can work against you. This is a better format when you're just getting started. Um, I see Daryl just said, does, does Bluehost allow, you know, the stuff like the testimonials and screenshots? I don't know, man. I, I, I just use the screenshots uh, of how to set up the, the website. That, that's completely allowed. I don't, I don't know what screenshots you would use as far as testimonials there other than just like, you know, it's just like showing them how to set up a website. So you just use the screenshots. Bluehost actually even provides you, if you contact the affiliate manager, they'll provide you screenshots if you don't want to do it yourself. I personally bought um, my own dedicated Bluehost account. I've been using them for years. And I, I just, I screenshotted, you know, myself, all my screenshots are my own, but they'll provide you with their own screenshots if you, if you want them. All right. So this is the basic format. And this is like when you would mention your product. So you have like a couple days of value. This is pure value. Now here's, here's a cool undercover way <clears throat> to mention the product more often without it like getting annoying to people. So what you can do is in these value um, pieces, I usually like sometimes I make the value emails like it's just like a it's like a blog post in the email. But I really my favorite ones are honestly to link to a blog post. And here's why. 
you want to get your, your 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 email subscribers used to clicking. Like if you keep everything in email, and then the times you actually want to link them out to a product, like if if you did if you do like eighty percent value in your emails and you hardly ever like link to anything except for the times you want to sell, you're not really training them to click. So you want to get them to click. So that's one of the great things about it. What's great is 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 in these value pieces, you can link to the product, but it's it's like a nonchalant way of doing it. So like say maybe right here in value number two, you're teaching about like why you want to set up a sales funnel, and you could talk about how you use click funnels to do that, and you could link to click funnels below. So it's it's like a really like low key way of doing it. It's not like pushing it down their face yet because you're still you're still taking time to build rapport. Now, email three is where you mention the product. So this is where like for me, like I usually I'll use an example, like say, um, say I was talking about list building and I, I, I talk about like the misconception and needing a big list and I'll say, hey, you know, in my product, Zach Crawford mentoring, I teach you how to turn a small list into big profits. It's like a really light pitch like that. It's not even like a hard pitch. Then of course, you know, third day, go back to value, same thing, link to blog post or video. You can keep them in emails if you want. Um, I've done that as well. And then the the fourth day, another pitch. And then the final day is a hard pitch. We'll talk about the hard pitch when we get to that actual email. Um, but this one, you, it's like you're, you're really selling it. Like, hey, you need this. Um, give me a yes, guys. Is, is all this making sense so far? Like, I want to make sure that this isn't overwhelming. This is making sense before I continue forward. And then we're going to break down what each email is. Just want to make sure that everybody's caught up to this point. All right, I'm seeing yep. Come on, guys. I need two more yeses to move forward. Want to make sure everybody's good. One more, one more needed. No, you can't say yes twice, Derek. That doesn't count. Okay, there we go, Kumar. Just making sure, just making sure. All right, so email number one. This is the one I told you about. It's very important. It's the help me help you email. So the real point of this email is really just to set the frame. And what I use this email to do is really to let them know what I believe in or what I stand for and and then what they can expect from me and, and, and why they want to digest my course. So one of the things I like to do when I let them know like what they can expect from me or what to, to they can, you know, what I stand for is that most people when you get on their email list, and you probably know this to be true, they're literally like hard pitching you from day one. They don't even know what it is and they're sending you to an offer immediately. And the reason they do this is because they're afraid to lose your attention. But by doing that, it is it's it is a pure numbers game. You're not going to get the, the type of results that Steve Howe gets. You're not going to get the type of results that I get from your, your email list with a small subscriber list if you do that. You're going to need to get thousands of subscribers every single month. Like literally, like you're going to need thousands of subscribers to do that. If all you do is you link out and try to sell stuff right away. And so... What I do is I let them know that, hey, you're not going to see any of that crap from me. That's what the amateurs do. So I'm letting them know out of the gate that I don't stand for that stuff. Um, another thing I do is I'm selling them on the importance. So let me highlight this here. I'm selling them on the importance uh, of my course um, because understand this. If, if, if they don't consume it, you can't help anybody. I mean, I'm going to assume that most of you guys here, besides making money, you actually do want to help people. You want to make a difference. You want to make an impact in the world. That's what entrepreneurship is really about. And the only way you can help someone is if you get them to consume it. The other reason this is important is because the the first couple of emails are key to get people to want to open your emails in the future. If you just like send them some hard pitches out of the gate and you haven't built any rapport, you haven't made them say like, hey, I'm a cool guy or a cool girl. You want to hear more from me? Like they're not going to keep following up with you. They're not going to keep opening up your future emails. You're going to have real no connection in their e email inbox and they're just going to skip over your emails. So when they consume your content, it's going to build a strong relationship. I showed you the open rates for my emails and when people go through that, from that point forward, they're at least open to hearing more from me. They're open to hearing the things I have for sale. They're open to hearing like what I, what I, what webinars I'm running or what's going on in my life. <clears throat> but if I didn't do this, if I didn't set the frame from day one, they're not going to listen to me in the future. Now, what you want to do is you want to introduce yourself, inter intro your course, and what they can expect. So usually one of the things that I like to do, <clears throat> and I didn't do this in my early emails, but I started doing this after a while after I realized it, and, and this is when I learned from Andre Chaperone about the open and closed loops. 
And so what I do in, in the early stages is I show them like the bullet points of what they're going to learn. So say it's a seven day course or a 10 day email course. I'm going to show them like the, the titles of what each you know thing is. And ideally you want to make the titles of your emails pretty good because that's going to make them want to, oh man, that looks cool. They're going to want to open those emails in the future. Now, this email is also the best time to let them know about any of your social media channels. If you have a Facebook group, if you have a YouTube channel, um, anything like that, uh, Steve Howe, i seen you pop on here. Maybe you've been on here the whole time. I don't know. I've shown you off several times in here. You, you, you get too much credibility from me, man. So anyways, this is the, this is the point where you want to show off your social channels and your Facebook group. So in, in, this, in this, this email, basically let them know. And, and this is something I don't suggest. Don't if you if you're on everywhere if you're on like Instagram you're on Snapchat you're on YouTube you have a Facebook group you have a Facebook fan page like people are not they don't they don't know you they don't they don't like you enough yet like keep it to like one or two your your two most active channels and push them there so for me Facebook group YouTube channel that's it because when you ask people to do too many steps you lost them they don't know you yet they don't trust you now example why do you want to lose weight how would how would that change your life? How could that make your life better? How would that impact your life? Could you please let, you know reply below and let me know your biggest struggle with losing weight? So if I was in the weight loss niche, right, and I wrote the email about you know what they can expect from me and what they're going to learn over this email course of seven days to lose weight, what I'll do at the end is I'll say P.S. Um, the P.S. is one of the most powerful sections of your email, and I'll say hey could you could you do me a favor and just like reply below. And, and let me know, like, what's your biggest struggle with losing weight? Like, and also, like, why is this so important for you to lose weight? How would that change your life? Um, if you reply, I'll, I'll, I'll respond. I respond. I reply to everybody, you know, something like that. And, and the whole reason you're doing this is because of the fact, because of the fact that you're also getting information to make your, your funnel better. Like, ask Steve. Steve gets people to reply all the time. Like, when people reply, it's like the best feedback because now you know how to make the funnel 10 times better. Like they're, they're giving you pure gold to use to put in your funnel. The same thing for the last email we'll talk about, the Q&A email or the one I, I say basically, you know, answers to your questions. Both of these emails are like ammunition to my, to, to my funnel. Literally, I, I use the things people tell me because you'll keep hearing the same things. I struggle to lose weight because I can never stay on the diet and I cheat on the diet. Or I, I, I get on the diet and I do it for like 30 days and I burn out and I just I want some good food again. Um, you know, I, I do the diet and, and it just, I, I don't have the confidence that I can follow through and actually get the result. You're going to hear the same objections. And then what you do is you take those objections and you put those in your emails and it, it converts 10 times better. Um, Steve says, so true. Leading with value and coolness and the frame up your whole, uh, how your cool free value is going to help them. So th this whole email, it really just sets the frame. It gives you tons of valuable ammunition, ammunition you can put in your funnel to make it better. So th this, this email is something I use almost in every one of my funnels if I can. Now, email two. And realize, remember what I said, guys, I showed you examples, like, and me and Steve play around with this. Like the titles don't have to be exactly like this, but the, the basic uh, example, right? You're, you're going between value, pitch, and value, and pitch. But these are just kind of like baseline formats I like to use. And the reason being is this is copywriting. Like three reasons why you need to X. What we're doing is we're selling them on the idea of why they need to do the intermittent fasting diet or why they need to build an email list or why they need to wholesale real estate. What you're doing is you're selling them on the big idea of what your product is that you're trying to sell them on. So this is just copywriting is what I'm teaching you. It's just copywriting without the boring side of it with all the hooks and things that confuse you and make it very hard to implement. So an example, three reasons why intermittent fasting will help you lose weight and change your life for the better. So for me in here, I'd probably talk about one, it gives me amazing energy. Two, it puts my, my, you know, my metabolism on like a fat burning furnace. Three, I don't know. It's easy to follow. And I've been able to stick with it for over a year. And every diet I did before, I couldn't stick with it. You know, you, you can just come up with like simple tips. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. I mean, this could, this could literally, this could be an email. This could be a blog post. This could be a five minute video where you just share three tips. Um, but basically it's a pure education piece of content to educate them on why your topic is important. Now, if you're selling a funnel building software like ClickFunnels, so here's, this is important for some of you guys right here. If you're selling ClickFunnels, right? You must first educate them on why sales funnels are important. Remember what I said, like almost everybody can benefit from a sales funnel, but for the most part, like people don't know what the heck a sales funnel is. They don't know why they need it. They don't know anything. They literally don't know why a sales funnel is important. An offline business owner, 
they have no clue about this online marketing stuff that you know. They have no clue why they need a sales funnel. So you'd have to sell them on why a sales funnel is important before you can sell them the tool. So if you try to go in and try to sell them a click funnel, let's just say you got click funnels. You think click funnels is the most amazing thing in the world. You think click funnels is so easy to build click fun uh, to build funnels because it takes the tech stuff out of the way and you can do it in five minutes. They don't care because they don't have that same epiphany that you do. They don't have that same big idea that, man, this sales funnel can change my life. They don't even probably know what a sales funnel is, so therefore they don't need a sales funnel building software. So you have to sell them on it. So if you guys look at the funnel I built right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have two different funnels for ClickFunnels this year. One is more for the newbie that wants to make passive income. So I sell them on it. That's the funnel I currently have right now. And I'm not selling them so much on, on, on the idea of ClickFunnels as a tool. I'm selling it on as a way to make income, and it's a big opportunity to make money because business owners need sales funnels. Online and offline business owners need sales funnels. And I'm selling them on the big idea that this tool is something everybody needs. So you can you can become a super affiliate for ClickFunnels. You can sell funnels to people who need funnels. I'm selling them on the opportunity. Now, I'm going to create a second funnel, which is to people that are already, you know, they're more experienced. This is what I, Jonathan, if you're watching this, this is, this is you. So I'm creating a second funnel for business owners that need a funnel, but they're not really aware of really what a sales funnel does. They're farther along, they have a real business, but they need to learn how to build a sales funnel to, to grow their business. Steve Howe is a perfect example of that. When he come across me, I was teaching about list building and sales funnels. And so by him buying my $97 product, he learned the concept of sales funnels. He put his own sales funnel together. Now he's killing it. And that's, that's, that's literally how you do it, right? You got to first educate them on why they need a funnel. I don't, I don't know. Maybe Steve can comment. Did you really know that you needed a sales funnel when you started or did you really learn about sales funnels through me? I don't, I don't really know that part of the story, but basically that's the point. You got to sell somebody on a sales funnel first before you can sell them the tool. Now, email number three, training, how to content. This is really simple. This is a pure value piece of content. It can be an email format. Um, you can link to a blog post, a video tutorial, a podcast, you know, whatever you want. The point of the content is really just to build goodwill and, and, and give some good value so they trust you. So what I like to do is I like to brainstorm. Remember what I talked about earlier? I like to brainstorm the step of steps or skills the person must need or may need in order to be able to purchase my product. Or basically, what is the, the steps they need to take to reach their goal? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to frame up my product as the solution to that problem. But what I'm doing is I'm usually in this piece of content, I'm going to teach them like a simple step, just one step that will move them closer to what their goal is they want. So I used the example before, right? I used the example before in my boot camp. how, you know, the first step is I, I basically taught them, okay, here's the simple step uh, to set up your business. If you want to build a business and you want to build a personal brand so that way you can grow, you need a website. Hands down, you need a website. So I showed them how easy it is to set up a website. But then later... What I did is I sold them the idea that now you need something to make money. And the solution to that problem was MOBE. And that's how I did it, right? The, 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 the funnel was really to give cool value, show them how a business works online, the big concept of how it all works. And then later, I, I sold them like, hey, you got all this cool stuff. You know how a business works now. Now you got to actually you gotta have something to sell. You got to have a way to make money. And that's, that's what MOBE will do for you. Give me a yes if that makes sense. I sold them on the idea of creating an online business and how it works. And I just gave them a few little cool tips of, of how to get going. But then I sold them on what they need, the vehicle, the, the Lamborghini, so to speak, to get there way quicker, which was MOBE. That's, that's how I did it. Now, email number four. It's myths about X. So myths, uh, myths about intermittent fasting, myths about list building, you know, whatever you want to call it. So this content, uh, for this content piece, it's really focused to break down common myths I know they may have or heard um, of common beliefs they may have that are wrong. So we talked about this before. This is the one about like, say, you know, they think that intermittent fasting is not healthy. They think that intermittent fasting is something that, you know, is hard to do. They think it's something that, you know, will not be beneficial to them. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking all the myths that I know that are out in the industry and things that people are peddling around the Internet that aren't true. And then I'm going to create a piece of content to break those down and rebuild their beliefs to what I want them to believe, so that way they will purchase my product. Now, this usually requires understanding of your niche or basically listening to questions or objections, 
But if you listen to me in that first email, if you start actively building your list, like your whole goal is to build your funnel. And then from there, your goal is everything you do every single day is focus on getting people into that funnel. So you can start making sales and figuring out what you need to tweak to make the funnel make sales. So you're going to get objections and you're going to hear common problems from that first email. That's going to give you some feedback of how you can even tweak some of these emails throughout the funnel. Because you're going to hear people saying things like, well, I've tried this or I've heard this about this. And, and it's going to give you ammunition to change things in your, in your actual funnel. So the real point is to break down their beliefs and then rebuild their beliefs to make them believe what you want them to believe. So that way they'll purchase your product. And this is a great time to lightly pitch the product and say, hey, you know, um, after you talk about all the things that aren't true, and you break down those beliefs, you say, hey, my product will help you get your solution. Here, here's where you can get it. It's a very light pitch. Remember, guys, if you haven't got expert secrets, get that book. I'm telling you, this is going to, it's going to reel all this stuff home, what I'm teaching you, make it 10 times more powerful. Now, here's an example. Um, people think that making a lot of money with an email list, uh, you need a big list to do that. You need a, a massive list to make a lot of money. So, you know, one of the people that are on here, what I do is I break their belief system and make them realize it's not about the size of the list, but the relationship of the list. Now, one of the things I do in the beginning, I didn't have Steve, right? I didn't have Steve to prove this concept. So I use myself. Remember what I said in the beginning, you got to work with what you got. If you're, if you're a nobody and you're just starting, you don't have testimonials. I didn't have, I didn't have Steve back then. So what I did is I shown them my personal results I got from having like a list of like a thousand people. When I first started, I had like a baby list. I didn't have, but a thousand, 2000 people. By the time I had 2,000 people, I was making $40,000 a month. So I used my own results of what I was doing to show people that. But once I had Steve, now I do Steve. By the way, I don't know if Steve, if you're still on here, but I'm actually buying a domain um, that's like Steve versus uh, Bob. <laughs> and I'm going to make you like the person that they, they want to obtain to. Just thought I'd let you know that. So basically what I do is I use Steve as the story for them to relate to. Because instead of just making the concept that I want them to sell them on, I'm giving them a face, I'm giving them a name, I'm giving them a real person to obtain to become. So um, in some of my live streams last year, I actually, like, I used the example of Steve and people were like, I want to be Steve. They actually said that. And that was when I realized, man, this is, this is super powerful stuff. I didn't realize a lot of the stuff I was doing, guys, I want you to understand, if you guys mess this stuff up, if you guys royally screw this stuff up, I'm serious, like, you don't even do it half right, you're going to get results. I didn't even know what I was doing when I was doing all this. I just kind of watched people like say Russell Brunson and people that I, I idolized at the time. And I'm just like, well, they do that. I'm going to, I'm going to do that too. But I didn't understand the con. Like I'm giving you the format. If you literally just watch like 10 minutes of the video and then go implement and watch 10 more minutes and go implement the step and watch 10 more minutes and go implement the step. You're going to have a, a pretty darn good funnel way better than my funnels when I was making a lot of money. And it was because all I was doing is watching what people are doing, but I didn't really understand the concept of what I was doing. I didn't understand how it worked. I didn't understand like how to put it together right, but it worked. It still worked. Now, in this email, I'll lightly pitch them and say something like this. So if I talked about the whole like the, the list building myth, right? You don't need a big list, um, right? So what I would do in my email is say, hey, if you want to learn how to turn a small list into big profits, that is what I will teach you in Zach Crawford mentoring or my product called whatever. So I'm going to, I'm going to create content. I'm going to break down their myths and uh, myths and rebuild their beliefs. And then I'm going to pitch them a light pitch and say, Hey, my product is the solution to your problem. Here's where you get it. So it's not a hard pitch, but it's recommending it in a really cool way. Now, example number two, people think building sales funnels require you to be a tech nerd and understand advanced marketing. So maybe in this one, um, one of the things I could do, and remember what I said, this, this doesn't have to be a hard set formula. Like, you know, if you notice when I showed you guys my, my original, uh, let me see it really quick. Slide 54. Just bear with me for a second. I shown you guys like right here, these titles, you know, that there's not like three or four or five. Some of my funnels have them. They're the, some of my funnels, like I have one, it's called build a profitable business. It's the exact format of what I'm showing you right now. This is another funnel I did called the daily action plan. So this one was slightly different. It's the same format in the emails, just the titles I, I toyed with, the titles I played around with. So maybe what I would do in, in, um, in this example right here, right, on, on say building um, funnels, because people think building funnels are hard. I would literally just do like a 10, 15 minute tutorial video showing them like how easy it is to create a funnel with, with ClickFunnels. So I'd basically teach them 
how easy it is to create a winning funnel. The first thing I would do is show them, basically go find somebody else's funnel. So I'd say like, hey, do you have a podcasting course? Look, go opt into John Lee Dumas's podcasting course, go through, download all of his emails, study it, and then make your own version. Don't copy it, but make your own version. And then I would show them how I build the funnel inside of ClickFunnels in like 10 minutes. Like literally just building the same funnel John Lee Dumas did. I'm like, look, I'm going to copy his funnel. And I'll say, and I wouldn't say copy, but I'll say, look, I'm going to show you how easy it is to replicate the funnel that you, you reverse engineer. Or you can go to ClickBank and find a, a, an awesome funnel on ClickBank. And then I'm going to show you how easy it is to create it. And I would literally go in there, drag and drop things, show them how easy it is. And then bam, I would, I would, I would link to the product. Give me a yes if this makes sense. If you are promoting click funnels, that's one of the easiest ways to do. Ruth, you are unforgiven. It's, it's un, uncalled for that it, at 3 or 4 a.m., whatever it is your time, that you did not show up to watch this. Can't believe this. <laughs> if you would have slept through it, I, I would have totally understood. All right. So um, the big takeaway for this one is, is, is this. Um, you cannot pitch a product before you sell them on the big idea. You have to sell them an, a, the idea first. Um, I was just making sure. I thought I, I spelled, I, I, I reworded that the wrong way. So yes, you cannot sell them on the product until you sell them on the big idea. So basically, you got to get them to believe in the concept. So our example here with ClickFunnels is we need to first get them to, to basically say yes in their mind that I need a sales funnel. If you don't convince them that they need a sales funnel, and I want you to understand... You can use all the persuasion, all the direct response marketing, all the copywriting you want, but if you don't help them get that epiphany, that big idea that they need that, they're not going to buy your product. Like you, You're going to have a hell of a time. But if you do this format that I'm showing you, what it's doing is in a really cool way, you're helping them come to the conclusion on their own that I need what, what you're selling. That's it. When you go through this format, you're helping them make the buying decision. Yes. Daryl Stout says, sell the vision. That's exactly what you're doing. You're selling them the vision, but you're letting them make the buying decision. If you guys notice a lot of what I do, I do a lot of work up front. And then when I sell you, my pitch can be kind of honestly like half-assed and it's still going to convert because you guys already accepted, I need to funnel or I need to learn how to build a list or I need to learn how to do this marketing concept. And so when I sell something, then you're like, I need this thing. But it's because of my content up front that does the work, that overcomes your beliefs, that overcomes your objections. So by the time that I make an offer, you've already been sold on the idea in your own mind. I don't need to do any of the selling for you. You've already made that buying decision yourself. So once I present ClickFunnels per, per se, you've already been sold on it probably a month prior from all my content I've been creating. Now, number five, common mistakes. So, okay, just making sure. All right, so this email is all about making people aware of common mistakes you see people making. So this also could be common mistakes you did while taking your journey. So I talked about Doug earlier, right? So Doug could use the example of, of you know, some of the mistakes that he made when he first got started about, you know, overthinking doing videos, for example, how he built up in his head that he has no value or how like he compared himself to younger people. And therefore he thought like, because he's not younger, he can't compete with all these young bucks. You know, he can share this. And what this does, it makes him very personable. It makes him very relatable. It makes people really trust him because now they're like, man, I, I feel the same way. And once people relate to you, the buying power is so much easier. So when you consistently build your business, one of the things you're going to see is common questions and struggles people are facing. So this is going to this is going to give you the idea for the common mistakes that you can point out. You know, like earlier, I used the example of the three common mistakes I see people making with their funnels. It's because I've been doing this stuff for so long. I've, re, I've reviewed people's funnels so much. I've done so much coaching. I, I see this stuff every single day. People ask me the same questions. The more you, you, you immerse yourself in your niche, the easier this stuff is going to become. But what you can do in the beginning, if, if you're just starting out, just go do research, guys. I showed you how earlier, how you can go out there and find like somebody that's it's selling Bluehost and creating a blogging course. Go out there and look at some of their blog posts. Look at their content. Read the comments on the blog posts. Read the comments on their Facebook fan page. People are going to be asking questions and things they struggle with, and it's going to give you ideas of, of what you can kind of guess what the common mistakes are. Now, um, at the start of the presentation, I talked about the three big mistakes um, people make with their cell phone. I talked about that already. So yeah, that's that's basically why I told you to write that down. I just put that there for myself. But that's why I told you to write it down so you could see later, like that's an example of what you could use in this email. That's what you could use in this content piece. That's why I told you to write that down so that way you'll, you'll see why later. 
Now, here's an example. If you were in the weight loss niche, many people try diets, but they don't work. We talked about this a little bit earlier, right? So here, here's the mistake. People try to go at it alone or work out at home. So a lot of people I know personally, in, in, in like when they lose weight, they're self-conscious. And so therefore, they don't want to go to the gym. So a lot of times they work out at home. Or if they've tried to work out before, they try doing it all on their own. Maybe maybe they're married and like it's, it's just them doing it and their spouse doesn't support them. So what happens is they give up. They quit because they don't have a support system. They quit because maybe that other person is still eating bad food while they're on a, on a healthy kick, and and therefore then they cave in because the person is like still eating pizza and chocolate in front of them, and they're trying to eat healthy. You know, so your solution, your solution would be the product you're selling or your product, where you say, hey, my product or this product, um, whatever you're promoting, has a Facebook community where we support each other. That's why we all stay on track. We all set goals together. We all work together as one common mission to help each other. So now it's like, hey, maybe that's that's why I failed. So if you guys aren't getting this, one of the things I'm doing here, if you don't realize, and this is copywriting, I'm taking the blame off of them and I'm putting the blame on something else. See, none of us, none of us want to admit our own BS. None of us want to admit that we make mistakes. None of us want to admit that it's our fault that we don't make money. It's our fault that we haven't lost the weight we want. It's, it's our fault that we don't have the relationship we want because we've been divorced two times. It's our fault because, you know, we messed up on something. We would rather point the finger at something else, someone else, or anything but ourselves. So what, what you're doing here is you're taking off the blame that like, hey, you just got to be self-motivated and go to the gym and do the work. But instead, you're putting the blame on, hey, it didn't work because of the fact that you didn't have support. You didn't have a community to work with. Now, mistake number two, people try to lose weight by cutting extreme calories and basically they give up everything and then they burn out and start binge eating and, and they're back to their old habits again and they gain weight again. So your solution is my product teaches you how to eat more of the right foods so you're never hungry and you never fall back into your old habits. So one of the things, example, in intermittent fasting, right? Even if you cheat because of the fact that you're putting yourself in a fat burning furnace where you're not eating 16 hours a day, it pretty much keeps the, the weight off of you. You know, even last year, I got a little off track in my diet, but I didn't really, I didn't gain much weight. I gained a little bit of weight, but I, I cut it right back off because of the fact that I stayed on the fasting. Even when I, I got off track and I started eating some junk and stuff like that when I was working more, I still stayed lean because of the fact of the diet. And then it was very easy to get right back on track and eat the same stuff. So nonetheless, what you're doing is you're taking the blame off of them and saying, hey, this is the mistake. So five common mistakes people make when they're trying to lose weight. And you're, you're, what you're doing is, is people have negative opinions, negative beliefs that they associate because they've usually tried that before. Usually in your niche, if somebody's passionate about it, they've, they've tried this before. It's not their first rodeo. It's not their first time trying to make money online. It's not their first time trying to lose weight. It's, it's something they've done many a times before and failed. So what you got to do is point out this product didn't work for you because of this and, and my product solves that problem because it doesn't do that. It's totally different. It's a new opportunity. Give me a yes if this makes sense. You got to frame up your product is different. Your product is a better solution. Your product will help them do things easier, simpler, make their life faster, you know, something as a benefit, but it's it's not it's not their fault. Give me a yes if this makes sense. Um, Kumar, yes. 7 days a week, 365. All right, cool, cool. Oh, I see John, big man John. We've been talking about you quite a bit, buddy. We we've, we've said a lot of bad stuff. You missed it. All right. So, email 5. Basically, this email, you want to pitch and sell them on why they need your product. So, um, real quick, John, um, I know, I know you're just popping in now. At least I think, I think so. Cause I just now seen your like, um, I, I've given several examples. So you'll want to go back and watch this where you want to build, um, you know, a funnel for your three T method. I, I, I basically try to purposely use a lot of examples on intermittent fasting. So that way, when you watch this, it's useful to you. Um, so I would go back and watch it. This is the format you'd want to create your funnel in just a FYI. All right. Continuing guys. So um, this email, you absolutely want to pitch and let them why and let them know why they want you, they need your product. So it's not a hard pitch, but it's it's constantly pushing them back to your pitch. So if you've done your job, you know your your open rates should be at least thirty percent plus at this point. You've been delivering good goodwill. You've given them a, a ton of value. You've pre-educated them, and so at this point, you want to basically let them know you know why your product is going to help solve their problem. 
All right, almost to the end, guys. Got a few more slides. Thank you for sticking with me. Um, I really hope you guys implement this. I'm telling you, it will change your life. So, more valuable content. That, number six. This is this is self-explanatory. It's just like in you know the first couple value pieces. It's just high quality content, something to educate them on your niche, educate them on your topic, and why it's important. So, example, in some of my recent funnels, I've been using the iPad. I shared this earlier to draw out the mountaintop view of how everything works. So, something I realized when I was playing around with the whole iPad idea in the free Facebook group is is, is how engaging it was for most people. How they loved the iPad when I was drawing on it. So, when I was talking about con, like complex complex topics, like say YouTube rankings and 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 how to to how a funnel fits together and how I do everything. Before, I could tell people weren't really getting it when I just did a talking head video on a live stream. So when I started drawing on the iPad and drawing how it all fits together, it, it, it just totally changed the game. It made it so they could understand it easy. So that's what I would probably, I've been doing in some of my recent funnels. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick with it because I think it's a very a great way to a, a explain something more complex. So depending on what your industry is or what your niche is, you know, you want to try to think of some cool content that you can just help educate them one step closer as to why your topic is very important for them. Now, email seven. So this is the last email. Um, remember what I said, you can add more or less emails. It's up to you, but this is the base format. So this is what's holding you back. This is really your last day. This is a hard pitch. Um, this is really just to get them over the, the fence. So the point of this is really to give a ton of value. So you're mixing a couple different elements. You're going to give some more value. You're going to educate them and introduce them um, to your product. Actually, sorry, it's not the last one. This is the second to last one. So uh, you're going to introduce them to your product. And secondly, now you want to ask them why they haven't joined. So this is really, really important to set up for email number eight. And here's why. Um, I, I, I originally learned this when I did it in a live launch. And, and it worked like gangbusters on a live launch, but it works for evergreen. Like, and by evergreen, I mean like you just, no matter how many people come through your funnel every month, the same people see it. So what you're going to do is ask them what's holding them back what, to get started. Why have they not joined? Why have they not made the purchase yet? You can word it however you want, but the whole point is to figure out like, why didn't they buy? And so what this is going to do is it's going to give you a ton of valuable information. They may reply and say, hey, um, this would be like for John. You know, I think the price is too much. I can't afford $37 a month. Um, for somebody else, they may reply and say, you know, I just don't, I don't think I can actually like set up a funnel. It seems really complicated. Or they're going to tell you something that in their head is an objection. And the reason this is important is because you can use this later to add to your emails. Your whole goal is to get this funnel to the point, like eventually, where like nobody's really responding. Almost nobody's replying because you've smashed all of their objections and you've literally answered all their questions as they go through your funnel. So what I do with this email is I listen to what they, t they tell me and then I go back through my funnel. Remember what I said, you tweak some of the elements. I listen on this step because th this is better than email number one. They've got to email number seven. They've went through all the content. Now what I do is I listen to them here and I go back and I add in those elements in the emails earlier and say email three or email four or email five. And my whole goal is to get it to the point where they're, they're almost not replying on this email anymore. And when you get that point, that means that he, the funnel is really dialed in and you're just collecting money. Now, also, it, 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 this is a great opportunity to sell people. I mean, they're, they're going to reply to you. And as, as I, just like I said earlier, when they reply to you and tell you their objection, all you do is like, if it's something that's not true, you just tell them what the real, real answer is. Say, Hey, Hey, it actually is easy. You know, when I first started and you share like a story about how you overcome it and tell them what, you, what, what, what you want them to believe. And some people are going to buy from just interacting with them in email. One-to-one -one selling is, is way more powerful than just sending one-to-many. Now, here's the point that I said, you know, like when I was using the example of Doug. In this email, you really want to get personal in this email and come down to their level. So you want to kind of step off your marketing pedestal, so to speak, even though we want to sell stuff. And, and you really just want to let them know you're a cool person. So a great way to phrase this email is by telling them a story of how you were once in their shoes and when you got started. You know, for John, he could talk about like, example when he struggled um you know after he got out of you know hardcore bodybuilding and then he started packing on weight and he tried everything after he got you know over 30 or over 35 i think that was around the time that he really struggled with it and 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 you know he tried all these diets and all these different things and a lot of them are from the young bucks that have fast metabolisms and the stuff just didn't work for guys over 35 and it wasn't until he figured out his 3t method and how to put it all together that actually showed him how to to overcome those challenges um, he could share how he was overwhelmed and he was buying lots of products. It was stressing him out. It was making him feel bad about himself. It was affecting his relationship. You know, the, the more detailed you can get here about how it impacted your life 
and how it really like you know caused you a lot of pain and how you you felt that way just like they are it's it's going to push them over the fence where they want to buy and and that's going to make them realize that you're not this superhuman uh, give me a yes mate we'll see do any of you guys feel like like when you, you compare yourself to me and you feel like I'm some kind of superhuman that I speak way better than you or I, I, I can do things that you don't. Somebody told me today that they, they compare themselves to me and they feel like I'm like on this giant mountain, even though I try to put myself way down at the bottom. They said they view me as like this this huge guru that they can never obtain to. And so what that really kind of, I'll be honest, that really kind of, um, it kind of threw me back is because I'm always trying to, to position myself as I'm just like you. But it made me realize that, like, it doesn't matter even how much you try to make people realize that you're a normal person. You got to understand when people come onto your email list or when they, they come into your audience, they come into your Facebook group, they usually view you as this, like, Superman, so to speak. And you got to let them know that you have kryptonite, right? Because Superman has kryptonite, and that's why he's likable. He, he's, he's superhuman. He can do some crazy feats, but at the same time, he has weaknesses. And you got to let them know that you have weaknesses. You you went through those struggles. You went through those pain. You had that overwhelm. You know, this lets them know that you're a real person, and it lets them know they can relate to you. And this is going to get you sales, hands down. <laughs> Derek says, yes, Superman, that's how I see you. Yes, even after six years. Yes, you make it seem effortless. <sighs> Man, I got I got to do a better job to, to like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just going to spell things worse than I already do. I got horrible grammar as it is, but maybe that'll make you guys feel better. I'll try it. All right, so moving on along. So an example for ClickFunnels, um, you could talk about how um, U2 was once held back by the fear of being able to learn how to use it. So you, so example for me is I would probably talk about, like, honestly, you guys probably notice I do this a lot. I'm trying to point out the stuff that I do so you guys can see my marketing that I'm doing, so to speak. And, and you guys have noticed I'm always talking about how I'm a technophobe. I hate technology. I see Ava's on here right now. She, she can tell you, like, when she starts when she starts talking really technical with me, like, it's almost like, it, I'm, I'm not going to lie, it turns into fights because it stresses me out. I don't like technical stuff. So what I do is I tell her very, very simple stuff. Like, if I want her to tweak something on, on, like, my blog, right? I'm like, I want this done. Yeah, but da 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 No, no, no. I just, I just want this done. I don't, I don't like details. It really stresses me out. So one of the things that I do is I'm constantly talking about how I hate tech so you guys can see, like, look, I'm not this this perfect person. I don't know all, like, I know the bare minimum that I need to do, and that's why I always tell you, guys, don't worry about things being pretty. It can be ugly. It doesn't matter. Just do what you got to do to get it done. That's all that matters. So basically, what you're going to do is, is you're going to help them to, to see that you once didn't have the confidence as well, and, and how you could frame it is like, hey, you know, I didn't have the confidence to, to build funnels either, but it wasn't until I purchased this, this course, this product that helped me learn step by step how to do it. And then what amazingly happened is I actually figured out how to do it. Like what you want to do is you want to frame it up in a way that basically lets them know that you were at that point that they are too. You were stressed out. You were scared. You were overwhelmed. But by buying that product, it helped you overcome that challenge. It helped you to, to do that thing, to, to get that solution that you wanted. But until then, you felt just like them. And then, of course, do not forget to ask them to reply. You want to know what's their biggest fear, what's holding them back, what's what's stopping them from making the purchase. This is this is ammunition for your emails, guys. This is how you tweak the funnel. We're going to talk about tweaking it here in a minute. Now, this is the last email. Woo, thank God we're, we're, we're cooking. I can't believe you guys are still here. You guys are some rock stars. So this is the, the last email. This is the headline I use, answers to your questions, open up. And this email is a hard pitch. Like, there's no way around it. We're just outright telling them, you need, you need my stuff. Um, this is the final email. And what we're really using this email for is to answer common questions and to smash their objections. We want to get every single reason they can say, yeah, but this won't work for me because of this. And you don't understand my situation because I don't, this doesn't, you don't get it. You want to be able to smash those objections so they buy. <clears throat> so, Remember what I said, this is why email seven is so important. Sorry, I, I highlighted both. This is why email seven is so important is because we're, we're, we're getting the ammunition we need for email number eight so we can overcome those objections in email number, in email number eight. When we, we hear it in email number seven, they tell us stuff, then we can use some of those questions as common questions people are, are worried about. And then what's going to happen is eventually you're, you're going to have very few questions and almost your whole funnel is just going to demolish them and it's, it's going to print money. <clears throat> so what I do in the beginning if, if you don't know, like, the answers, like, I showed you guys this. I'm going to show you really quick. I went back, and I'm going to show it again really quick. Um, I showed you, for instance, in the blog post I did, the one I've been working on for my Bluehost funnel that I haven't finished. 
<clears throat> and and I don't. These are not. I mean, these are questions to be to be honest. I know people have asked me in the past, but I also modeled off of some of the other blog posts. So just like I, I told you, when I start with something, I just start with the base, and then then what I do is I, I listen to what people ask me, and then I actually go replace things with like what they're really asking. So if we go to the bottom of this blog post, you see I have this whole Q and A section. You can click any of this. Like, what's the best blog host? Um, how do I start a blog for free? You shouldn't start a blog for free because that's stupid. Uh, I'm not a good writer. What, what, what options do I have? So these are all just things I, I brainstormed and, and it was, it, these are just objections I think people would have or common questions. Now, some of these are things people have asked me over the years. I've, I've set up a bajillion websites for people. So I've heard a lot of these, but this, this blog post hasn't went live. So it's just stuff that I brainstorm myself. So that's what you do. You, you kind of just brainstorm in the beginning. All right, so here is some questions that I kind of I start with, and you can play around with these based on your niche. Um, these are questions I hear a lot, and these, so this is a lot of the ones I use in that email, like when I first launched the funnel, and I don't really have an idea what people are going to ask. <clears throat> are there any bonuses? And then basically I'll answer, yes, I have bonuses, and here's how they work. Um, you can see them on this page. I use that as an opportunity to link back to the sales page. Um, how long do I have to sign up? If, if they have a limited time, you tell them. Like you got you got a week, you got two days, you got... Um, you know, 30 days until this bonus is up. You know, if there's a time frame, you, you let them know. If it's evergreen, I mean, you can't really do a whole lot about that unless you have like an actual real scarcity in there that they need to sign up right now. Um, so what I try to do is try try to create like some actual like real scarcity. So one of the things I did, like, you know, my recent ClickFunnels bonus, um, I threw in my the agency in 30 days program and let them know that like once we get some testimonials that's being pulled off the market, um, and at that point, it's going to be sold at 997. So that's I said honestly, I can't tell you. Could be a week, could be a month. Right now, my focus is getting testimonials, but when it comes down, it comes down. Um, how many hours do I need to implement? So this is one of the things people are going to want to know. Like, how much time is it going to take me to do this? Um, realize people do not want they don't want um, your product the way that you you want it. An example. You're trying to learn how to build a real business. You're, you're investing your time to do it. Most people don't want to do that. They want they want their 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 product that they're buying to work like a, a washing machine. You push a button and it works and that's it. They don't care about how it works. They don't care about the inner workings. They don't care about getting good. They don't care about improving. They just they just want it to work. So you got to let them know how long is it going to need to be implemented every night. Um, how do I know this works? So you overcome this one with testimonials. Either use your own, use yourself, or borrow testimonials from the, the affiliate product that you're promoting. Um, here's an example of my niche. Will this work for network marketers? Will this work for affiliate marketers? Will this work if I have my own product? Will this work if I'm in some special business that I'm not naming right now? And then basically what you do is you state who it'll work for. So for me, the only ones that I can't really help are people that are in e-commerce businesses. So anything else that sells digital products and services, I, I can claim that. Um, I'm not good with tech. What should I do? No problem. I show you how to do that step by step. Even Even my mother could do it. You know, you basically overcome the objection. Um, I'm scared of video. No problem. I show you how to overcome the fear of video and how to master it, just like I did. Um, I'm not good with, or, or like right there, I could use, I could actually use Cynthia and show her 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 challenge of overcoming it. Um, I'm not good with X Y Z. You know, this is just some random thing they think of, and then basically you brainstorm a solution to help them overcome this issue. You'll get better and better with this the, the more you go. Now. Um, things to make the emails better. Of course, use testimonials always. Social proof sells. Hands down, it does. If you can get social proof, always use it. If you can create a limited bonus, you know, guys, I, I teach you inside of Top Earner Mentor how to create your own bonuses. You know, if you're promoting some of the stuff that I promote, I've created funnels and bonuses and stuff that you guys can, can leverage. But once again, I want you guys to become your own top earner. I want you guys to become self-efficient and go out there and learn something. If you're doing something, if you're mastering YouTube, create your own bonus on how to do YouTube. If you're if you're doing Facebook ads, it's a skill everybody wants to learn. Create your own bonus on how to get leads with Facebook ads and add it to your product. Like you can create your own bonuses. And then what you can do is you can make these bonuses limited. Like you only have, you know, until tomorrow in order to like, you know, say the last day of the funnel, you, you have until tomorrow to get it. You guys can make this a real, a real like scarcity funnel. You know, ClickFunnels actually has a countdown timer and you can change it. So after that countdown timer ends, they can't see the page anymore. It's over. It's real scarcity. So you can do this and it's going to kick more people into your funnel. <clears throat> then, of course, tell them to reply to your email if they have any final questions. <clears throat> so this is the final day, the final push that you have to get them over the fence. And what you want to do is say, hey, this is closing down. 
Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If it's evergreen, same thing. If you have any questions, you know, reply to this email, let me know. You, you, you're basically using this last email to overcome any objections of questions that maybe you haven't answered. Now, important things to think about. We're almost done. We've got two more slides. So number one, um, in this funnel, you, you want to point out the myths, the common mistakes, and reasons they've failed in the past. And then what you want to do is you want to frame up the product as the solution to their problem. So once again, I'm going back to that rubbing salt in the wound. You know, if they feel bad about themselves, they have low confidence, you want to point that out so they feel even worse. I know that sounds harsh, but it's going to make you more sales. You can't help them if they don't buy your product. So this is you, John. You feeling bad about your man boobs? You should. My product will help you eliminate the man boobs. That's, that's how it works. Number two, <clears throat> you want to rub salt in the wound. Talk about that right there. You want to point out the pains to their problems and then prescribe the solution. And the solution is always your product. The solution to solve their problem is your product. It's the affiliate product or whatever the heck you're selling. Number three, you can always add in more value um, content. It's up to you. This is, this is a baseline format I'm giving you to follow. So that way you have something to launch now. It's something you can build now. But as you get better, you want to toy with it. Maybe five days, maybe 15 days. Play around with it. Um, you know, at the end of the day, remember what I told you before. Champions always do more than required. You know, amateurs... They, they literally would just follow just this format. Now, I, I want to point this out. I'm not saying it's bad to be an amateur because in the beginning when you start, you're an amateur. So in the beginning, it's completely cool to follow this, this exact format. But later, I want you to get where you actually start experimenting and playing around with it because that's how you're going to actually get to the point where you're really, really good. Now, number four, your funnel will not be perfect from the start. So you, what, here's how you tweak it, guys. You want to pay attention to your open rates. Remember what I showed you. The open rate should be pretty high. 30% plus is what you're shooting for. Ideally higher. You want to pay attention to your click-through rates. So this means how many people are clicking your link. If you got like 1% to 2%, 5% click-through rates on your funnel in those first seven days, something's off. Something's not working. You got to change that email to get that click-through rate up. Um, responses. Are people replying to the emails? This is how you're going to know. Are they, are they liking your stuff? Um, you know, depending on how you do it, that could be reply to emails, that could be commenting on the video, that could be, you know, commenting on the blog post, wherever you put it. And then what you do is you keep tweaking it until you get the result you want. This is the biggest mistake people make if they actually create a sales funnel. I hear Russell Brunson talking about it all the time. People build a funnel once and they say, Russell, this doesn't work. And, and like he always says, nine out of 10 times my funnel fails. On that 10th try, once I tweak it, it's a million dollar funnel. And that's how it works, guys. You, you do it, you tweak it, you do it, you tweak it, you do it, you tweak it, and then it spits out cash. And then you're laughing because everybody else quit and you're making easy money. Now, what's next? So this is, this is the point to, to how to put all it together. So once the funnel is done, you know, this is the hardest part. Building the funnel, I'm not going to BS you. It's going to take you some time. If you're brand new to this, you're just starting, it's going to take you some time. Once the funnel is done, you focus should be daily marketing. And that's your number one funnel. Get people into that email list and, and focus on, on, on tweaking it so it makes sales. I don't care if you do free traffic or paid. And honestly, my personal opinion is, is start with free. And the reason I say this, I think it's horrible advice when somebody tells you to start with paid traffic because if you don't know the basics, if you don't, if you don't even know how to a funnel, if you can't create your own funnel, trying to run traffic to your affiliate offer ain't going to get you sales. If you don't know, for example, how to create your own funnel, running traffic to, you know, pay traffic to the funnel isn't going to guarantee you sales. Sometimes it, you'll get sales, but this is a skill you want to learn yourself before you start playing with paid traffic. If I would have spent money on paid traffic like two years ago, I, I don't think it would have turned out well. I probably would have been crying. Now, broadcast emails. So this is where an, another huge mistake people go through. I didn't talk about this earlier, but what most people do is after the seven days, they just, they don't do anything else. But the money is in the follow-up. So you want to keep in contact with people. On a broadcast email, just so we understand, an email follow-up, everybody goes through it, meaning like the email autoresponder. So no matter if somebody opts in today, they opt in to 15 days from now, they opt in three months from now, they go through the same, you know, seven-day sequence. A broadcast email, though, happens after, you know, somebody's gone through that sequence. That means like I could, tomorrow, I could send out an email at 8 a.m. I could send out an email at 6 p.m. that night if I wanted to. I could send out an email right now if I wanted to. It's whenever you want to do. You load up the email and you press send. Now, you can schedule this. Like right now, I could write the email after I get off this webinar and then press send for three days from now. And it, it will work that way. But it basically, it, it's just people on the list. It's not somebody that's going through the funnel. 
Now, um, ideally, you want to email people at least three times a week and basically 80% value and 20% pitch. That's that's the format I like to follow. So for me, once I get my funnels done, I start I start basically building my list uh, um, with, with paid ads. The goal is basically I'm going to give value all through the week, and then I'm going to push people into one of my funnels. So I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. So as I said, you create different funnels. So I will either push them to like my webinar for Top Earner Mentor, or maybe I'll push them into my funnel about ClickFunnels, or I'll push them into my funnel about Mobe. But most of the week, my content is just like getting them to my YouTube videos, um, getting them to my blog, and giving them awesome content and building trust. So by the time that I push them into the funnel, they basically, you know, they're they're, they're going to end up buying stuff. So once I get to the, they go through the initial funnel. So right right here, they go through the funnel. Now they get put on my broadcast email list, and now I'm just going to follow up with lots of value. And then every now and then. I will put them into one of those funnels, which will pitch them on a product. Give me a yes if this makes sense. So if you want to sell two or three different products, you need to create two to three different funnels. And you get people to literally digitally raise their hand. So your whole point here is if you have other products, you want to create funnels around these. And basically what you're doing is you're getting them to digitally raise their hand and say, yes, yes, Ruth, yes, Zach, yes, you know, John, I want to know more about that product. So here's an example. We go on back to John Lee Dumas, right? John is not purposely like, he's not he's not sitting there trying to shove these funnels down your face, right? They're right here. They're on his blog. You have the choice that if you, you can opt into ones you want. So think about it. If somebody has no interest in, in, in doing a podcast, well, him trying to force a podcast course down their face is, is not going to end well. They're not going to want to hear anything about it. If they don't care anything about learning how to set their goals, that's pointless. He's going to burn that list out because they don't want to hear about it. If they don't, if they don't, if they want to learn about funnels, they can opt in about his funnels. So how you would do this is once they're on your broadcast list, you'll see how I'm going to do it. Probably like on a say, I'll, I'll, I'll email value all throughout the week, and then maybe on a Friday or a Saturday or something, I'll send them an email and say, hey, you want to learn about this or this? You know, and I'll, I'll link to a couple of my funnels or whatever, so that way they can they can opt into one of those. Or I'll ask them to you know attend my webinar for learning about Top Earner Mentor. You know, that's how I'll do it. I won't put people through and try to pitch them on something that they don't want. I only try to get them to buy stuff that they want. All right, let me go on back, go on back. All right, now, finally, the final step is to keep tweaking the funnel and and making more funnels because just like with anything, what you focus your energy on, what you focus on mastering is what you're going to get good at. So I want you to realize that if I had to bet money on anything, like if, if you were brand new and I went back and I didn't know anything and I was starting from scratch, I didn't have any results, I would start with this. I would start with this. I would start with building a funnel and then from there, I would go to work. I would be digging dirt every single day, pushing people into my funnel and making sure that thing converts. If you just do this, if you ignore everything else, if you ignore everything else and focus on what you're selling and you go all in with this, I promise you, if you don't make six figures by the end of this year, you, you've royally messed up. I don't care if you're selling a $100 product. If you focused 100% on this, you could be selling Bluehost. And if you do this, you could probably make a multiple six-figure income with nothing but Bluehost by the end of the year. Guaranteed. But maybe, maybe one person that watches this will actually follow through and do it, sadly. Hopefully, you're that one person. Now, any questions? Anything that you need me to go back and cover? Anything that didn't make sense? Um, and also state if you're watching this inside of Top Earner Mentor later as the replay, um, if, if this something doesn't make sense, then go into the Top Earner Mentor group and ask. Wow, I don't see any questions. Any questions, Daryl? It it wasn't it wasn't um, a lack of faith. I'm not I'm not saying. Um, so here here's a couple things to point out. One, I'm challenging you. Um, if you remember what I said earlier about the whole pain and like part of a job of a mentor is not to be your buddy. Um, a job of a mentor is not to to make you feel good all the time and, and motivate you. In my opinion, a real mentor kicks you in the ass. They, they literally punch you in the face with the truth and, and, and they call you out on your BS 
and they push you to play bigger. I don't know about what your definition of a mentor is, but that's mine. Uh, my definition of a mentor before I knew that, <laughs> it used to be I thought that they were going to motivate. This is why I like when somebody t- says they, they, they call me like anything remotely to personal development coach, I just get angry because I'm not a personal development coach. I'm a make money coach. I teach people how to make money. <clears throat> and so when I first got my, my coach, Kirian, the one that passed away last year, unfortunately, I thought he was going to be my buddy. I thought he was going to like always make me feel good. I thought he was going to motivate me. And he gave me some tough love. And he goes, look, there's two types of people. There's people that do things and they, they literally make no excuses. They stay up late. They put in the work. They suffer through the pain. They cry it out, but they get back to work. And then there's the 99% of people, which, you know, they like the idea of doing this, but they, they're not really serious about it. Which one are you? <laughs> and that really shocked me. I couldn't believe that he said that. I was just like, wow. Um, I, I'm the person that does stuff. And that really kind of set with me from day one, right? It, it really skewed my version of what I thought a mentor was. A mentor's job is not to make you feel good. A mentor's job is to push you. And what I can tell you is I've had people literally pay me $10,000 for coaching and they really just get on the calls with me and they want me to motivate them and be their buddy, but they have no interest in learning what I'm teaching them. So I'm not saying that to put people down. I'm saying that because I'm trying to call out my perfect customer that I can help. You know, I like using the example of John Basquez, um, and I'm not calling out anybody. I'm just saying what I've seen in the, the, the coaching hundreds of people. I can tell really quick who are doers and who are not. And John Basquez, for example, like I don't, even, I'd ne- I didn't tell him how to set up a funnel. I didn't teach him how to build his own product. I didn't teach him how to do copywriting. I told him what to do. I told him this is the plan of what we're building. And he got to work. He dig ditches. He didn't have a clue. Like he, he would, he would get frustrated. He'd, he'd box for me and say, "Oh God, this sucks." <laughs> but he would figure it out. He literally would stay up till three a.m. and figure out how to how to how to write sales copy. I told him the basics of how you write sales copy, and he figured it out. So I'm not. It's not my lack of faith in anybody. I'm just saying that at the end of the day, people that get results take action. They take action fast. And the people that don't. They, they question themselves. They have a lot of self-doubt. They constantly say, I wonder if this is going to work. I hope this is going to work. And they spend more time thinking over doing. Um, all right, so Gary. <clears throat> so you know I'm creating a video course as my freebie. Is it necessary also to add in the email course after someone goes through my freebie funnel? Um, Gary, this, this would be your freebie funnel. This is the format. Like you asked me earlier on Voxer, this is the format I would build. If you don't want to use my, my branded funnel... This is how you would do it. So this is how you would frame it up. You would you would basically use this exact format I taught you. So it when when I say email course, I, w- I want to clarify. I'm glad you actually said that because I didn't think like even though I mentioned earlier, it can be a mix of email, video, podcast, blog post, what you want. The email is just like it, it's the basic format. Email course is like if you wanted to do nothing but email, you could. But I personally don't really like just doing all email. I do it if I'm lazy at times, and that that happens. I'm not a superhuman like you guys think, but I like email and then really the email is to pre-sell to get them to the video. And the reason being is I'm personally, in my opinion, way better at video and explaining my points and I'm more personable on video than probably I am at writing. I mean, people say I'm a good writer, but I think I'm way better at video of like showing my real personality and that I'm a real person. And so personally, the the email for me is to pre-frame for the video. Everything for me is to pre-frame the next step. So the email just really sells them on why they want to click the link and go watch the video. So this is, this is how I would do it, Gary. I I would create the email course in this format and you can do video like just like you're doing with the slideshows and stuff, but follow this format because what I just taught you is copywriting. If you don't, if you didn't get that, this is, this is overcoming objections. This is using copywriting without really needing to know the underlining concepts of copywriting. All right, Derek, have a good night. Um, all right, sweet, Daryl. That's, that's, that's my point. Um, the reason I'm doing it and I'm saying it is I, I, I want to push you. I want to push you to be better because at the end of the day, like I can tell you that for me personally, like if I wouldn't have had Kirian like kind of challenge my belief, so to speak, and then also tell me like, like at the same token where you said, where's the faith? I believe that you can do this. I believe that anybody can do this. I believe even if you have some mental objections and you, and you stop, as long as you don't permanently quit, you don't quit on yourself and you just say, you know what? I don't care how frustrated I have to be. I don't care how much shit I have to go through. I don't care 
how many times I cry and literally want to give up. I'm, I'm figuring this out because if, if that person can do it, damn it, I can too. Like then I, I truly have faith that you can do it. And my goal is to, to, to push you guys to become who you want to be because I get more enjoyment from that than the money you pay me. I mean, at the end of the day, the best thing you can repay me with is not your money. It's with you going out and like, like changing your life because to me, this is one of the very few businesses. This is the beauty of the things we do. Like say John, John helps people get in better shape and feel better about themselves. I help people create their financial future. There's, there's very few businesses in this world that you actually get to help people and make a lot of money doing it. And that's what really gives me a purpose. And so what would make me happier than anything is to see you overcome your challenges and, and do it and give your daughter that better life that, that you said you wanted. All right, Kumar. So you said, wait, woo. I just seen this. Good job, John. So we're going to pin that comment. John just hit $1,500 reoccurring a month. How many days was that, buddy? Um, are you are you like, are you you like 60 days in yet of launching your product? I mean, that's pretty damn good for free traffic and a beginner. Um, all right, so Kumar, you said wait about six months of publishing YouTube content and then pitch. So when it's time to pitch, do you start mentioning your product in your new videos or go back and add links to all the previous videos? All right, so let me clarify. That, that was when I, like, I did a lot of research, and, and here's what I think. This is what I was trying to make the point because I know most people wouldn't really like do it the way it should be. The thing you want to focus on is getting your watch time up. So I honestly think if you can if you can hold out for like 60 days to 90 days, and that's if you're publishing consistently, that's going to be enough time that you'll be fine. So what you would want to do is focus on your watch time. Look at your analytics inside of your YouTube channel, and you want to get your watch time up. Like right now, um, and, and I, I haven't been publishing consistently. I'm going to start doing that tomorrow. I've had to basically finish up all my coaching calls and build all these funnels for everybody. Um, but now YouTube is like my focus, like my number one focus above everything. Even even over selling, it's building that channel this year is my focus. And so for the next 90 days, my real focus is to build watch time. Like right now, I think my average watch time is like four minutes. From what I can see, that's really good. I mean, I have some videos that are longer, um, but like average watch time across my channel is like four minutes per video, which I've looked at some like big dog channels where they show like their stats and it's actually better than theirs. So what you want to focus on is getting your watch time really engaging. If you if you follow the format inside of Top Earner Mentor, I teach you how I create the videos where I create hooks and open loops and how I do the content. And the stickier you can get your content, the better. It's going to get people to basically at that point to to watch your videos longer. And then when YouTube sees that, they see basically people are watching those videos and they're engaging with those videos and they're sticking around. Like when you link out, you should be fine. So um, basically what you do, let's see, let me make sure I answered all that. Okay, so if you wanted to, um, at that point, you could go back and add links into those videos. Yeah, so you could go back and add in links to those videos if they're getting traffic. Um, yep. Um, some of this stuff is in the case studies. This is just this is just a better version of what I teach. So uh, I, I don't know if I think David, you come in a little later. Um, the reason this is so detailed and so long, I, I basically made this so that way um, it replaces the training I already had in Top Earner Mentor to go in and, and make it even more detailed, so it's easy for people to to follow and and build out their first uh, kick ass funnel. Um, Zach, I'm freaked out on tech. What modules do I go through to swap out my group? where on the squeeze page and all the rest. Sorry, but I need to push. Okay, so I have some baseline training on on ClickFunnels um, already. Um, it's under the ClickFunnels Masterclass. However, for the funnel, I actually, um, and this is for any of you guys that are using my funnels for ClickFunnels or Mobe. Um, on ClickFunnels or Mobe, um, Ava actually created a whole new like training. Like, because my, my webinar I did, the live stream, like I'll be honest, guys. Like I said, tech is not my game. Like I'm, I'm, I'm. I know how to do it, but I'm not the best at explaining it, and I'm not the best at actually implementing it. I, I just know enough to get the job done. And so that that live stream was not like super detailed as far as like the steps. Ava literally created checklist, and she created a whole new video. So under download my funnels, if you look at the video next to the click funnels funnel, the video next to the mob funnel. Um, there's a video there on each one of them. It's the same video, but it's the same process. And it teaches you. She literally shows you step by step. She also has a checklist of everything to check and everything to, to do. So her video is a million times better than mine. Easy to follow. Uh, 
Um, David says, I like the point of creating your own bonus and make it a limited time to create that scarcity. Plus, that bonus needs to be directly related to the product that you're offering and selling. Yep. All right, guys. I think I think that's all the comments. Um, I think I got all the questions answered. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to download... Um, well, actually, I recorded an actual video, um, which sort of the high-quality audio and everything. And so... I'm going to to put this inside of the Top Earner Mentor Training, and I'm going to split it up. Okay, I see one more email really quick, or one more question. Um, which freebie do you think works best for Bluehost Funnel? Blogging Mastery or email marketing? Which freebie do you think works best for Bluehost Funnel? All right, so really quick um, to answer Kumar's question. Here's what you want to do. The, the Blogging Mastery is, like, is just my training on how to do blogging. You don't want to go... You don't want to go that detailed into it. The blogging mastery would be like an example, Kumar. You could create your own version. Like, and I'm completely cool if you want to do this. If you want to recreate your own like version of my blogging mastery and make your own bonus package, do it. Rip me off. I don't care. I don't get offended. Here's what you'd want to do um, for your your funnel, though. Go like opt into these ones I've shown you. I've shown two or three examples. Like this is Matt, Matt, uh, Matthew Woodward. This is Making Sense of Sense. Um, we talked about the blog, the blogstarter.com, I think. And I think the other one was like, start blogging online, go opt into every single one of these guys funnels and then make your own version, like literally summarize it, make your own version. So to show you, I'm going to show you how I do this. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, what I'm teaching you is exactly what I do. I still make my own original version, but I, 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 I use other people's stuff to model. So I organize all my stuff in Google docs. Um, and, and this is just how I do it. It's up to you how you want to do it. Um, give me a second. I have a lot of stuff in here. All right. So you notice like I, I have like a thing on like funnels to reverse engineer and then I have like Bluehost funnels and you see like right here, I literally go through and opt into their stuff and I download all their emails. So now I have a, a sequence that I can look at and then I, I have a format. I can model my own emails. So if email number one was like, okay, um, why, why do you need a blog? I'm going to create my, my email about why you need a blog, but a lot of the stuff that they say, I don't agree with. So I'm going to create my own version. Um, email number two, how to set up your blog. Now I'm going to, I'm going to model what they do. They talk about a few tips and they link to their blog post, which shows how to set up a blog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blog post, which you've seen, I did it that shows how to create a blog. Then number three, what kind of blog content should I create? So I'm going to create an email about what kind of blog content should I create? Here's how you do it. You literally don't question it. You do exactly what they do. That's how I do it. 